There we go. Hello. Ha, welcome back everybody. Happy Monday. Hope you're having a good one. I'm having an okay one. <laughs> but let me check in with chat real quick. Uh Eddie is here says uh says sub sub subscribe I can't speak, but subbed with Prime, hell yeah. For 20 28 months. Yippee skippy! That is almost a year. Oh my goodness, Eddie, thank you so very much for the sub. I really do appreciate it. I hope you continue to enjoy the emotes and stuff. I really need to make some more emotes and stuff because I've got a couple more emote slots unlocked that uh, that we can fill with lovely things. Or, in some cases, cursed things. But you know what? People seem to like both, so... Ah, I guess we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But anywho, uh, yeah, I sketched this kakapo last night. Um, I, we're not, we're not painting it yet, but I just thought I'd share because I thought y'all might like it. Um, this is, this is the bird I adopted when I gave myself a bird adoption for Christmas. His name is Rangi, which is part of the reason that, uh, that I decided to adopt this bird. Um, and he seems like, he seems like a lovely fellow. So here's a drawing of him. Um, if you're not familiar with Kakapo, they're, he they're so cute. They're heckin' adorable. And this adoption, what I did, helps support the recovery of their population. Because there's also not a lot of them out there in the wild. And, um, we want, we want them to be in good numbers and thriving. Um, birds are important. Anyways, this is what we're painting today. Uh, as you can see, you may, you may not, you may not remember, but I actually did a little bit of work on this outside of stream time. Um, and this, this additional detail that I've added to it is the cumulative result of like, oh, several hours of my Saturday night. And I don't know if it looks like that much work, but here we are. Ah, that is, this is, this is the thing about this painting. This is the thing about this kind of painting that honestly does me so much worry is that I've spent, when this is done, I will have spent basically a month of my life working on this painting. Obviously not, like, a full month's worth of hours, but, like, <sighs> a lot of hours working on this painting, actually. This has been the work of many, many hours, and we're still not done yet. And yet, I don't think any, <laughs> I don't think anyone is gonna notice or know that this is the work of many, 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 many hours. They're just going to see it and be like, oh, that's neat, or just not notice it at all and be like, eh, whatever. This doesn't appeal to me. The algorithm has failed me, and I'm mad, and I'm going to thumbs down it. I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> I'm just... Some sometimes, sometimes I get real tired of one's value of an artist being determined uh, so much by like numbers and analytics and what have you. But on the other hand, I'm like, well, how do I know whether or not my work is good if it doesn't have big numby next to it? Which is nonsense. But also, how do I know work is good? <laughs> anyway. Hello, Samantha. That was a burb friend. I've been wanting to draw some more birds for a really, really long time now. And I've kind of been hamstrung by giving myself this incredibly large, detailed piece to work on that I did not realize was going to take quite this long to complete. Um, and so on Sunday, I was just like, ah, I'm just going to sketch a kakapo, damn it. And so I did. I'm taking a sip of my coffee. This coffee is weird for recipe reasons. I needed some whole milk in the house, which I normally use skimmed milk. So I've put whole milk in my coffee today, and I can tell you, it's not really that different. <laughs> It's not that different. I was like, I wonder if the whole milk is going to play with it a lot differently. Like, not really. <laughs> not really, but but there we go. Uh, thank you so much for the follow, Viakadu. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Regardless, uh, welcome on in. Hello, hello, and thank you so much for the follow. Okay. Shall I actually attempt to do a bit of a paint? Because, because I can. And I think that would be, I think that would be a good uh, to do. Um, bep, 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 bep. I did it. Oh, yay. Thanks very much for the, uh, thanks very much for the confirmation. <laughs> it's lovely to see as well. This looks so lovely. No, oh, you, thank you very much. It's really kind. I am a Tarayan, my best. And this is 
a very we're we're into the very granular portion of the painting where well I mean the whole thing has been very granular look at the size of these freaking books but we're into the very granular portion of the piece where I've kind of decided that what I wanted to do with the book covers here sort of in the more slightly closer to the viewer areas of the painting is not to like uh, I toyed with the idea on stream excuse me just one moment chat Okay, hopefully you didn't hear that because I just did the loudest two sneezes I've ever done in my entire life. Oh my goodness. Something, oh, something in the air is making my nose a little unhappy. Here we go again. Okay, I think that's all of them. I really hope that's all of them. I'm going to take a sip of my tea because, of course, I do have a coffee and a tea because I have no chill. But also, you might note from the from the stream title that I actually, I almost considered, uh, thank you so much for the bless you, I really appreciate it. I almost considered delaying the start of stream today because I was, um, because I was having such a tummy ache that I thought, oh geez, I don't know if I'm going to be able to stream straight away. Uh, but then it, it sort of faded, it faded, and then I started the stream, and the stream starting soon stream uh, screen went up, and then my tummy <laughs> came back, but it's okay, it's kind of leveled off now, so I'm, I'm good to go. Um, but just one moment, please, everybody, because my, my moderator slash spouse has just come home, and I'm going to go say hello to him, so I'll be back in a second. Then we'll start painting, for realsies this time. Hey, sunshine. <laughs> Hello? Oh hell yeah. Oh no, it's Lino just subscribed. <laughs> oi oi Savaloys. Lino, thank you very much for this sub. Much appreciated. Uh Lino also says hello, sunshine, sunshine. Hey Lino. He says hello. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh oi oi Savaloys to you too, Lino, and thank you so much for 23 months of subscriptions. That's almost a year. What you doing? Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, my friend. Oh, you're welcome. <gasps> what? Oh, sunshine. Thank you. My moderator slash spouse bought me a box of uh, the the silly coffee I like to have in the evenings, which is very, very sweet. Um... <laughs> uh, new user Viokadu also says, uh, welcome home. Uh, new user Viokadu. They just followed about 20 minutes ago. Okay, well, hello. He says hello. <laughs> Thank you so much. Anyways, how's everyone doing? How are your Mondays? How was your weekend? Uh, I hope you're having a good one. I hope you've, you've been having a good one. And uh, it's wonderful to be here. And uh, I am genuinely committed to actually getting this gosh dang thing done today. I really am. I'm going to try my best to be somewhat productive on a painting stream. I know, I know. Blasphemous. Crazy. Crazy talk. What is this? Painting on an art stream? Is that allowed? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm going to, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a little try. Okay. We're just going to, we're just going to try something and see how we get on. Um, but uh, to allude to what I mentioned earlier, I did do a tiny amount of detail work on, on the weekend. And when I say a tiny amount of detail work, I mean probably about a cumulative two or three hours of detail work on the weekend. Um, but what it amounts to is I was really debating how to do like the book jackets sort of closer to the front. These ones in back, like you're not going to be able to see any details on these because they're, 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 they're smaller than a grain of rice. Okay. This is smaller than a grain of rice. I don't feel like I can get any more granular detail into something smaller than a grain of rice. I simply, that is beyond human levels of possibility. Okay. Um, so to that end, um, I decided instead of trying to like actually get like fully written out titles onto here, because I just felt like it'd be too visually busy, too small. 
and would kind of pull focus away from these two little guys at the back, which is kind of what I want to be drawing your eye towards in this piece. Um, I decided instead to just put these little details that kind of give the idea that they're, you know, sort of the spines of book jackets. Like, there's titles here, but you can't really read them, and that's fine. Ooh! Oh, no! Sorry, I just got a text message from the Postal Service to say that a parcel that, that I've been waiting for for a couple of weeks... Um, that is coming from overseas is due to be delivered exactly when I'm going to be out of the house tomorrow. <laughs> Wait, no, but that should be fine. That should be fine because it's literally a jade necklace. And I see no reason why they wouldn't be able to just put a jade necklace through the letterbox. Unless it needs a signature. Oh, please, 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 for the love of gosh. Please just put my jade necklace through the letterbox. <laughs> Please. Please keep your fingers crossed for me, chat, that they just put the jade necklace through the letterbox, because I'm also going to be out of the house the following day if they tried to re-deliver it. Oh, no. Beans, why? Uh. Oh, my goodness. Excellent, excellent, excellent suggestion from Viakadu in the chat, who says, hire an ant to do the detail for you. I love it. I love it. That's adorable. <laughs> I mean, if, if there's any creature that I believe could, could wield a paintbrush well, it would be an ant because they're very good at lifting things. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to mute for just one second. I'm so sorry. One more sneeze. Okay. I'm back. But yeah, so here's hoping they just put it through the letterbox. They, like, they, they should do. It's just TNC. Unless it needs a signature, which would suck. Ugh. Well, my fingers are crossed. My toes are crossed. I'm crossing. I've crossed my legs. I've crossed my arms. And I'm attempting to cross my eyes, but I'm not very good at it. Ugh. Ow. I'm going to give myself a headache if I do that for too long. So, uh, we'll see. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I will eventually get the thing. I've been waiting for it for several weeks now. And it's not urgent. It's just a really nice jade necklace that I gifted myself because I thought it would be special. <sighs> Anyways. So I'm going to carry on finishing up these. Oh, paintbrush. What are you doing? Paintbrush just went a little bit wonky there. Oh no. I hope this paintbrush isn't dying. I haven't had it for too long. But I just I just dipped the nice little nice fine tip into the water and suddenly it went like Bleh! like Bleh! and I'm like no 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 please hold your nice fine finely pointed fine liner brush shape. This is for lines lining. Don't be silly. Anyways, oh, thank you Theo. Also, hi, how's it going? Terrible drawing time is not turned off on purpose. It's turned off because the last stream that we did was a Hollow Knight stream, and I had a tummy ache before stream started and while stream was starting, and I still kind of do, so I was, uh, I had just one extra thing to, uh, draw my attention away from all of the tasks that I normally do when I'm starting a live stream, and therefore, I forgot to untick that box. <laughs> so I have corrected it now, and I do apologize for anyone who in the last 26 minutes had wanted to redeem a terrible drawing. You can do that now, in case you're wondering what Theo and I are talking about. Also, hello, Theo. It's lovely to see you. Welcome on in. There we go. Uh, your poor body, says Theo. I hope it doesn't come back. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, it's kind of, it's actually kind of moved into my lower back now, so that's fun. Um, mm, but I think that's just, well, listen, I'll be 40 soon, so <laughs> things, things are, are, things are working. Yay. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> A pinnacle of perfect health I am not, but I'm, I'm coping. All things considered, it's not that bad. Anyways. Um, can I climb a fr flight of stairs without getting winded? No. Can I climb a flight of stairs? Counting my blessings on that one. Okie dokie. I want to make this kind of gold color, but a little bit more, 
No, I don't. Because we've got a terrible drawing time redeem. Theo would like to see. Terry the Forg Mage presenting a lovely and comically large card that says happy birthday, Lino. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yes. Okay. One moment, please. Here's the terrible drawing time canvas. Now allow me to explain for anyone who's new here what the deal is with Terrible Drawing Time. As you can see, it lives up to its name. <laughs> terrible Drawing Time is a phenomenon whereby for 5,000 channel points, I've got five minutes or less to draw a character or concept of your choosing from memory or sight unseen on the Terrible Drawing Canvas. And I keep meaning to upload them to Discord. And I always forget to do things after stream because my memory is a sieve and I never remember any of the things that I say or do while I'm streaming, when I'm done streaming. But uh, we've got a birthday gift for the birthday person here. Oh my goodness. And happy birthday, Lino, for me also, as well as Terry the Forg Mage. And, and friend of the channel, Theo. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. All right. So also for the uninitiated, Terry the Forg Mage is a friend of the channel who is a froggo and a very sweet pea. Happy birthday, Lino! <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but that was my moderator slash spouse Twitch user Sledge Callier wishing Lino a happy birthday as well. Anyways, shall I get on with the thing? I shall try. I shall try. Oh god, I've done so much. Now I really want to make sure it looks actually good and not terrible as usual. Um, anyways, <laughs> Lino says thanks. Oh. Okay. All right. Where's my timer? Where's my timer? My timer for five minutes on the clock. No pressure. Starting now. Aw, beans. Aw, beans. Okay. Okay. It's a Terry. I'm going to put Terry here. I'm going to put Terry here. And I'm going to do my very best to try and remember <laughs> how I draw Terry. His face is kind of a funky little pistachio with some eyes. And you can see there's like another eye over there. Then he's got, oh, it's a little bumpy. Hold up. I can do better. Obviously I am placing this directly beneath a long bandicoot because it just felt appropriate. It just felt appropriate to place this directly under long bandicoot and he's going to have a big old smile because he's really happy about this because it's your birthday of course he is okay i'm gonna draw in this little little cloak There's his little cloak. And here he is, and he's holding. His little hand. He's just, he's just gonna be holding it like this. Ta da! Maybe just. With his other arm as well, like so. Hopefully this is going to be big enough for me to adequately write it in. I hope. He's got his little tunic on. With his little fantasy dude belt. His little pouches of snacks and spell ingredients. Here's hoping we, he doesn't get those mixed up. Because that, I'm sure he'll be fine. He's very good at remembering which is which. <laughs> um... Do these little feet. Mm 
There we go. It's a little footsies. They're not, they're not exactly symmetrical, but oh, who cares? You know what? Terry's trying his best. Um, I actually feel like, I feel like the trouser leg situation here could be improved a bit. Hold up. I feel like I can do better with these leggies. Slightly wider trouser. This one. Go slightly further back. Yeah, that makes no sense at all. But, you know, I actually know I've got time. I'm going to fix it because this is a birthday message. And that is so important that I feel like it needs to it needs to be done justice to. That's worse. Okay, the more times I do this, the worse it gets, I'm noticing, which is really interesting. But here we are. How's that? No, I, I don't like it. Okay. I'm putting too much pressure on myself, I think. I think I'm putting too much pressure on myself. First things first. I'm going to make the legs... Somewhat wider legged trouser here. Yeah, let me just see a little bit of the one behind. Like that. Okay, that, that looks a little bit less insane, I think. Um, now I have to try and draw. Some cursive. which is, as you can see, absolutely something I'm very good at. I'm going to add some little flourishes here. And the time is up. Heck. I spent way too much time on Terry's feet. Um, but here we are. He wishes to convey a very happy birthday to our lovely friend Lino. I hope you have a lovely birthday, and I hope that this isn't too horrifying to you. And Theo, uh, who requested the artwork, I hope you're happy. There you go. Tis Terry. All right. Anyway, that was terrible drawing time, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Anywho. Um, uh, Viakadu says, I was getting ready to head out for the day. Ooh, fun stuff. I hope you have a wonderful Monday in that case. Y'all, oh, this is all thanks to Theo and Sammy. Much love, my friend. Much love indeed. <laughs> right. And I do apologize for lingering so long on trying to get the feet right, but here we are. <laughs> Anyways. Gonna take a sip of my tea again. This is this tea is called Winter is Coming, which I think is a reference to Game of Thrones, which I've seen like the first season of and then kind of dropped off of. But um, the tea is good. Most notably, it's got like ginger and mint and fennel seed and poor tea in it, which I'm given to understand all of which should be good for stuff like when you've got a tummy ache. And I had a tummy ache when I was starting stream today, so I thought I should uh, have myself a nice cup of tea that will help with the tummy ache situation. So here we are. Anyways. <laughs> Samantha says, feels like the exact wrong point in the year for a tea with that name. I mean, we did just, we did just spring equinox. We did just spring equinox. So is it though? Is it though? I mean, maybe if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, maybe if you're in the su Southern Hemisphere, you're kind of moving into like autumn now. So technically, the entity called Winter is leaving. <laughs> Samantha says, yeah, exactly. Exactly. We need that. Um, oh, beans. Well, whoops. Um, but I guess crucially, it had the ingredients I felt like my body wanted right now. So. That's why I'm a drinking it. I did. 
I did buy myself a couple of new teas um, this afternoon. Or I either bought myself some new teas this afternoon or I went through the entire checkout process of ordering some teas this afternoon and then forgot to actually click complete purchase because I noticed that the, the, the it didn't come out of my bank account. So I don't actually know whether or not I bought the teas, but I intended to. So fingers crossed I did that. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do that when stream is done. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of the brownish black from the... I didn't introduce my paints. Oh, shoot. I was so distracted by like the tummy ache and all of the things and the this, the that, and the other. I didn't introduce the paints that I'm using today. So for most of the books on the bookshelves here, I'm using this Gansai paint set, which is um, the Shadow Black uh, set. Describes itself wonderfully as Japanesque color. <laughs> And it's supposed to be inspired by, like, the Japanese-style black inks, but colors that are, they're black, they're, ki like, they're reddish black, but it's basically just a sort of dark muted red, etc., 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 through the little rainbow here. I love these so much. They're so nice to work with. They do give you a very subtle muted vibe, as you can see from the swatches here. I find... I mean, they, they describe this as yellowish black, and to be honest, it's kind of just a really dirty brown. Um, and some of them are certainly, I think, more vibrant than other. Like, the red is very vibrantly red to me. The blue is very vibrantly blue. The purple can read really easily as just black, and the brown is a really nice sort of dark brown. Um, but for this, I've been finding them really, really useful. So, yeah. These two and some, some of the other bits I've been painting more with the Inktense paint pan set, which is much more like straight ahead, vibrant watercolors. But one of the things that I like about these paints is that um, when they're really good for layering, and I mean, we're not doing a ton of layering in this piece. We've done a little bit of shading here and there, and we're going to be doing some line weights. But, um, but these are really good for if you... Um, basically they're, they are fully permanent once dry, which is super useful actually for a lot of the techniques I type to, I tend to employ. This brownish black has just turned this really like murky and ugly and bad. Um, and I'm not totally sure what to do with it. Should I just keep adding more paint to it or should I just start over? I'm just going to start over because, um... I would have to add so much more, like, orange and yellow to that to get it to a nice shade of gold again. Oh, no. I think there's just too much black in that brownish black, and it just sort of muddied it right up, which uh, did not end up actually looking good. So I'm going to have to go about this a somewhat different way. Anyways, uh, the books look so beautiful, sis. Theo. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's been... It's been um, quite a, quite an interesting journey getting them to this point. And when I say an interesting journey, I mean just so long. This has taken so long. It's ridiculous. Okay, I'm just going to touch the brown, the dark brown. Just touch my, I don't think my brush has touched touch with my brush. And add just the teensiest trace of it rather than filling the whole thing. Oh yeah. There it is. Okay. Perfect. 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 Yay. Um, Oh no, that's adorable. Samantha says it just took this long so they could have time to read all those books. Yes. Listen, I'm just, I'm just giving them like, they're, they've just been going on this date for like months now. And frankly, I love that for them. They're very happy. I mean, you can see they're having a lovely time together. So, I mean, you know. Why, why would I want to, why would I want to disrupt that? 
it's it's fine it's all fine okay and to that end ah here we go the yellowish books and i'm just gonna pop some of these fun little this is a book jacket or a book spine i guess because some of these might not have jackets i don't know Samuel Parker, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome on in. Hello, hello. Hope you're having a lovely Monday. How is everyone's Monday, by the way? How are your weekends as well? I hope they have been a good... I have been having, I would say, a pretty... I had a pretty okay weekend, I think. I got some... I did some... I don't know if you would count it as cooking or baking. Because technically, it wasn't like baked in an oven, but it was something that I guess is kind of in a similar realm to a baked good in as much as it was made with things like eggs and milk and flour. Um, I don't want to give away too much because it relates to my next YouTube video. And there's still leftovers of it in the fridge, which we're going to have tonight. Oh, Vittle Boy. Sunshine, are you looking forward to the leftovers tonight? Sorry. Are you looking forward to the leftovers tonight? Yeah. Hell Yeah. He's looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to, to see what it is like as a next day leftover. It will be, I think, very interesting. And I will report back on my results in uh, the YouTube video. <laughs> Teehee. Anyways. Um, I think maybe this one will have blah, 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 blah. Book. <laughs> uh, pancakes are made with eggs and flour, but I wouldn't really call it a baked good. Not sure if we have a category for that thing outside. Of yeah, because you, you think of it like it's in a similar category to a baked good. Like pancakes have a very similar ingredient set to like a sponge, you know, eggs, milk, flour, sugar sometimes, but not always, depending on the type of pancake that you're making. I mean, that's not that's not far off of a of a cake. You're, you're just cooking it on, on the hob rather than in, in the oven, you know, or something like, something like a Christmas pudding. Traditionally, you would boil it, but it's still, it's very close in content to a cake because it's got flour and eggs and, you know, flavors. <laughs> I'm confused. Anyways, are Yorkshire puddings baked? Yes. It is literally the same mix as pancakes and then put in the oven. Yes. There is also, there is also, it goes by various names. Sometimes it's called, sometimes it's called a German pancake. Sometimes it's called a Dutch baby pancake. Sometimes it's just called an oven pancake. That's what I call it, which is basically a big, it's like a big, um, giant single Yorkshire pudding, except it's sweet and it'll be served with like fruit and, you know, maybe some whipped cream, maybe some maple syrup, a little sprinkle of sugar, that kind of thing. So it is basically Yorkshire pudding, but like the, the dessert version of it. Oh my God. I haven't made one of those in forever. I've got rhubarb in the fridge. Big old, and I've got eggs, big old oven pancake with rhubarb compote and custard. <gasps> Mm, but also I've got puff pastry. Oh, there's so many good things I could do and I'm probably not going to do most of them because I'm tired. <laughs> Anyways, Samuel, thank you very much for the hydrate. I'm going to take a big old sip of one of my beverages because of course I have two beverages because I'm a beverage goblin and I don't know how not to have two. I need multiple beverages because they fulfill different needs. It's pretty good. It's very cold. Anyways, uh, sounds horrifying to me, but I'm very particular about new food experiences. That is totally valid. <laughs> I am very experimental when it comes to cooking. Though that being said, there are a lot of ingredients I know I don't enjoy. So I'm never sure as to whether or not... I've asked the question of my spouse before, like, am I a picky eater or am I an adventurous eater? And the answer is I... D I yes? The answer is yes. Oftentimes I will find, notwithstanding just the fact that, like, um, I don't eat meat and I'm allergic to mushrooms, that I will 
go through a restaurant menu and be like, well, there's nothing I can eat here because they'll have like two dishes that don't have, um, they'll have like two dishes that don't have, uh, things that I just straight up do not eat. Um, because I can't eat them. Uh, <laughs> And those ones will have like, oh, it's got black olives in it, and it's integrated in a way that I can't ask them for them for them to take out the black olives. Or it will have, um, you know, like it'll just be packed with chilies, which oh, I can't do chilies because they give me heartburn. Or just like mustard galore. Like they've just put grainy mustard in absolutely every portion of this recipe. You cannot ask for them to exclude it. And, and I, I, yeah. <laughs> what else? I'm not a huge fan of mayonnaise in large quantities. A thin scrape in certain contexts is fine, but Maybe I am a picky eater, but then again, I really like playing with, uh, playing with ingredient combinations and trying new things and exploring stuff I haven't had before. So I, I honestly don't know. Anyways, uh, Samuel says, what's up? What's up? How's it going? Um, I have had a really, I've had a Monday and I don't know about anybody else, but on Mondays or like the Monday equivalent of your week, if you don't work like a standard Monday, Friday, and then, and then the weekend, um, my Mondays are the day where I'm just sort of like, and it will take me about three hours to do a 30 minute task during the day on a Monday. And then by Thursday, I do like 12 tasks in the space of 20 minutes. It's just my, it, it's like, it's my week is just sort of like continuous sort of acceleration and then stops. Um, and then on the weekend, I'm like, oh, I'm going to do so much stuff. And then I'm too tired to do any of it. It's, it's amazing. Anyways, turn up. Hello. How are you doing? Thank you so much for the lurk. Much appreciated. I hope you're having a lovely Monday as well. Um, but yeah, so I have, I would say I have an exciting week lined up. I do have a slightly different week lined up this week. As if you've seen this stream schedule, you'll know that I'm streaming today. I'm streaming Thursday. Um, and then I will, uh, I'm not streaming on Friday because it's good Friday. And that means that... Um, I will most likely not be available because I will be doing Easter things because, uh, my moderator slash spouse has the day off. I don't know what we're doing for Easter weekend yet. Um, but, uh, I will most likely not be available. So I have decided, uh, to not schedule a stream for that day just in case. Because I wouldn't want to schedule it and then cancel it because I like 90% I'm going to be busy. So um figured I should just leave it at that. Hope that's okay. And, um, but I will be streaming on Thursday as usual and hopefully, maybe, maybe on Thursday stream I will actually be able to do something that, um that we can start and finish in a single stream. Wouldn't that be novel? <laughs> As opposed to this absolute behemoth, which has taken so long and we're still not done. It is, I should, I should tally up how many, how many streams I've actually spent working on this because I feel like it's been like a month. Um, oops. <laughs> Anyways, it's possible that the next thing we do is, uh, where's the little guy? Is this little guy? Which is a kakapo. And I can't imagine would take longer than one stream to paint. So, I mean, I could get, again, I don't know. I'm really, I, I'm, I'm using the word granular a lot lately. It's just a really useful word. I could get really granular into the detail of the, uh, like the plumage and stuff for it, but I'm choosing... I'm choosing to not do that this time in the interest of getting things done a little bit more quickly. I do feel with like socials and that kind of thing that there is a little bit of an impetus to work a little faster when it comes to painting, but I'm kind of of two minds about that. And I'll, I'll elaborate in a second because, uh, my builder's tea has just shown up. Thank you. Did you use the skimmed milk for this or the whole milk? I just used the skimmed milk. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Is that Barry's tea? <gasps> and a gingy nut. Oh, thank you. So Wait, sunshine, come back. Come here. Yeah. I want to thank you. Mwah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> That's my moderator slash spouse, everybody. <laughs> Provider of tea. And an all-round good un. All right. Um, some more book covers over here. What do I want to put on them? I think this guy. I'll do another one of these sort of. One of these kinds of shapes. Because why? Because I think they're really cute, actually. Are these lines looking a little bit crazy? Yeah. I mean, it's fine. Who cares? Maybe this book spine is just a little bit, uh, it's just a little bit on the piss. Sometimes they are, you know? I feel like that's okay. I feel like that's fine. Um, ooh, this is a nice, this is a nice big boy book spine. So I'm going to pop a couple of these little stripey doos here and here. And then just a big, just a big rectangle. Well, rectangle-esque, shall we say. I think that looks quite nice. I think that looks good. I hope, I hope it looks good. Ah, <laughs> oh, heck. Um, and then I think I'd like one of these to be one of these little sort of squiggles. Squiggly squiggle. And maybe just a nice stripe here. And a little suggestion of a shape. Anyways. Oh my goodness, silly little guy. That is a five stream watch steak. That is so many steaks. I hope you, en please, congratulations on your five steaks. I hope they're delicious. I hope you enjoy them. Also, hi, how are you doing? Welcome on in. It's lovely to see you. Welcome, welcome. We're just doing, we're just doing some funky little, funky little details onto these uh, teeny tiny book spines because I apparently fun. I didn't know I had one but five streak pog. Hell yeah. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I'm going to take a sip of this builder's tea that my moderator slash spouse just brought me. This is Barry's tea, by the way. Ooh, that's good. Which is an Irish tea. It's very nice. Um, it's, it's one of the ones in my, so we are still working through the gazillion boxes of tea that I had to purchase when I did that comprehensive review of all of the different types of tea, uh, that I did over on my YouTube channel. Um, in case you missed it, I'll pop a link to, uh, the channel there, just in case you're curious. Um, no, Sledge! Darling, sweetheart, I told you no. No. We talked about this. No. Anyways. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think that there ended up being something like 12 or 13 different like types of tea that we reviewed. And we've still got like six or seven boxes. But we are plowing through this stuff as quickly as we can. Um... We, we may end up not having all of them because I think there were some of them that I genuinely thought were, like, quite bad. Um, and I'm going to not want to drink those. Maybe my moderator slash spouse will have a different view because obviously, you know, taste is subjective. And there are some very popular teas that, um, that I, I don't, that I didn't think were that good. So, you know. It's, it's all fine. Anyways, what if you run out, says silly little guy. If, if, I mean, if we run out, we can just buy another box of tea. <laughs> that is, it's not expensive. The good thing about, the one good thing about the whole, the whole experiment that I did is that for the most part, like just a box of standard tea bags is not very expensive. I think the Typhoo that we, that we finished most recently, I think that, in, that box of like a hundred tea bags is like a pound from Iceland. So, you know, that. That one cup, like a single cup of tea is like a couple of pennies at most in, in a lot of cases. Though that being said, one of the ones that I tried that I did not like was, I think a box of 40 tea bags is like eight or nine pounds. 
and I didn't think it was very good. <laughs> I did not like it at all. Maybe I was just using the wrong bre brewing parameters, but uh, yeah, no, I remember that one was quite chemically and not very pleasant, which is bizarre. It's like Peppa Pig, there are some angles that should not, they should, exactly, Sledge. I'm not doing it, darling. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Don't you do it. No. No. <laughs> Anyways. Um, okay. I'm going to attempt to finish up these sort of goldy, yellowy ones. There's a couple, a couple that are actually sort of browner over here. I might leave those for afters and add a little bit more of the, like the ochre to the color at that point. Uh, I just want to pop in just some details onto these covers. Make sure that I want different books to look like different books. And so I'm trying to give them a reasonable amount of variation um, so that they look like different books. <laughs> but again, I'm still trying to keep it relatively, relatively subtle so that it's not kind of detracting um, from the things that I would like to be the most kind of oh I'm so sorry for the shaky cam I hit the uh, I hit the the camera stand with the tip of my paintbrush I'm so sorry are y'all okay I hope you're okay oh beans it's hard it's very hard to get details onto these ones here on this bookshelf just because of the angle that it is relative to the uh, relative to the the viewer, but also it's getting to the point where it's quite far away. But also, we wouldn't be able to see those very well anyway. So I think I think I've done I've done my best. I has I has to put in a valiant effort, and I'm gonna move on. Okay, to the the these ones I guess. Um, See if I can get some scribbly scribbles, scribbly scribs. There we go. Maybe a that situation for that one. This one can have a one of these, like so. And then this one down here, um, maybe another sort of squiggle. I think. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So I think after I've done with the, the sort of the, the yellow slash ochre range, then we'll have like some browns and some purples here and there from the looks of it. And then I think that's it. I think that'll be it. Cool. Um, yeah, I think that'll do for that. Okay. Wicked. Gonna add, gonna just pull in a little bit more of the sort of ochre color and maybe just a touch of natural brown, thusly, for these books here, which are quite a, quite a bit browner actually. So maybe a little bit more of the natural brown. Just to give it a slightly more appropriate tone. Anyways. Uh, silly little guy's doing alert. Gonna, <laughs> gonna go watch a video on what. Have a lovely time. I hope it's very, very, very fun. And thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a good one. Okie dokie. Squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. That's the name of the book. This one down here, I'm gonna give one of these. And then there's another one up here. We'll do that. And there we go. Okay. I think that's, I think that's that for this color. Yay. Next color. Hooray. We're only an hour into stream and I'm already moving on to color number two. Also, there's a little, there's a little fleck of something. There's a little fleck of something that's landed in my paint water. And I would like to get rid of it. Hurt. It's very evasive. I think it's a little, I think it might be a little piece of It looks like just a little fleck of paint, actually, that's not dissolving. Come on. Out you come. 
It was going to bother me if I didn't get rid of it. So here I am. I'm getting rid of it. Okay. It has been gotten. Hurrah. <laughs> oh, that feels so much better. Okay. And also, I do note there's a couple of like bluish books that it looks like I missed on my first pass. So maybe I should just do those real quick. Okay. I'm just going to pick up like a dot of the blue. Which, as you can see, is the paint that I've used the most of because this is the these are this is the paint set that I used by and large for Hollow Knight Art Month, and if you know the environments in Hollow Knight, you know that a bluish gray color is going to come in a lot of handy. So that got a ton of use during that month, um, and consequently, I'm going to run out of. I'm going to run out of bluish black and probably purplish black way before anything else. Um, maybe I should try a different paint set next time I do a, a Hollow Knight art. Who knows? Um, speaking of, speaking of Hollow Knight art month, I do have uh, a shop where you can buy prints, including some prints of Hollow Knight art. Um, very, very limited edition, those ones. Uh, but there are a couple left if you are interested um, and other stuff as well, you know, stickies of silly stuff and some sticker sheets and some prints and, uh, some pins as well, enamel pins, wood pins, good, good, good stuff. I think it's good. I hope you think it's good too. There we go. That's, that's literally all I wanted to do to that. And then there's a couple over here that are actually almost kind of a greenish blue, but I'm going to. I'm going to treat them as though they were blue just for our purposes here, just to make things nice and easy. Okay. All right. Shall I do purple next or should I do brown next? I think I'll do purple next. I think I'll do purple next and then brown. I don't know why my brain just feels like that'll be easier. Anyways. Um, so sorry. The chat. Okay. The chat bot came in with one of my automated, like, Oh, come, come hang out with me on social medias. Like right after I put, a message in the chat about my shop. Now it feels like I'm just egregiously self-promoting, but it just does that on a timer. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh no. Oh no. Never mind. Anyways. Oh yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to touch on, um, the, some, something that I was kind of thinking about earlier today to do with this painting, because this painting has indeed taken like so many weeks to, to work on. Obviously if I was working flat out like eight hours a day, it would be, it would have been done in like two days probably, but I, I can't work like that. And I feel like most, most painterly folks probably don't work like that. Um, for one thing, I would just have incredibly bad back and neck pains if I was painting that, if I was actively putting paint down that much and that quickly. Uh, so I just don't work very quickly. I'm, I'm, I'm a slow poke. Um, I do try, I do try, but if I try too hard to be efficient, I'm kind of afraid that I'm going to be compromising on quality and I don't want to compromise on quality. I want to make something that I feel proud of. Anyways, my point is, um, it's really frustrating that this kind of like working at a, at a pace where you're producing, something that takes an entire month to make is really anathema to sort of what, what like is expected in terms of like being a person who exists and shares their work on the internet. Um, I know that I think the average, the average person, the average enjoyer of artwork would be totally like, cool, you did a new artwork like every month or so. That would be super rad. But um, the average person, what looks at artwork, isn't going to see your stuff if you only post it once a month because the algorithm's like, you're not doing enough things, punish, and then no one gets to see it. And it just, it just disappears into the ether, unseen and unknown. And that feels bad. I'm going to mute for just a second, uh, cause I need to sneeze again. But on the other hand, I really, I really don't like the idea of having to produce a new work every single day, every month of the year. It's not, it's not feasible. It's not sustainable as a practice for most people. Certainly not like a, like a comprehensive, completed, detailed piece. That's just, that's, 
setting very unrealistic expectations for human persons to try and live up to, but also, um, but also I think trying, trying to produce a, like a single brand new work every day and having, you know, a body of work that's like 350 some odd pieces of new art a year, it kind of diminishes the essential specialness of it. You know, it starts to, it, it's, is it just going to start to feel like disposable, like fast food kind of thing? And that's, that's not what I think a lot of us want our art to feel like. I mean, there's like, you know, you might do like a sketch every day, but a sketch doesn't have to be all that. It's just, eh. I just, I feel a little bit kind of str struggly about that. You know what I mean? I don't know how to balance the needs of being a person who's not interested in compromising in terms of what I want to produce versus also wanting what I produce to be perceived. I don't know if it's, is it selfish to want to be perceived? I don't think it is. I think that's okay. I think it's something that a lot of people don't want to vocalize or that it, it feels like it looks bad to vocalize uh, out loud. But here we are. I don't have a filter. So tough biscuits. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, that was just, that was just an idle thinky thought just now. Um, I was musing on it a little bit earlier. <sighs> Anyways, I mean, I know that you can recycle content and I know some people, sometimes people do, especially if it's like, I feel like this piece didn't get enough love, so I'm sharing it again. And I think that's, I think that's great because oftentimes we miss stuff. Like I miss stuff and it's probably stuff that I would like to see. But, um, but yeah, anyways, just some musings, apologies for that. Uh, but thank you for listening to me you are. Anyways, um, I'm going to try and finish my coffee because it's stone cold. <sighs> Delightful. Um, Samantha says, this is the problem with living in capitalism hell. Even a thing you are doing mostly for your own enjoyment becomes commercialized by the spaces available to share with the world. And so the capitalist masters set demands upon how it's produced and shared. Oh, hundo percent. I had a friend saying that, okay, you know, like, Gen generally, in general, this isn't always the case, but generally things like, things like fan works, like if you write fan fiction or you make fan art or that kind of thing, that tends to be a much less monetized sphere. Um, though I feel like it's becoming more monetized and more commercial as time goes by. <laughs> um, but, uh, but which, you know, in, in some ways I wholeheartedly support because I'm like, well, the network's not going to make any merch of this canceled show. So I guess we'll just have to do it ourselves. Love that for us. Uh, but on the other hand, there is also sort of the, the, the inverse of that, uh, sort of the other side of that, which is like that consuming. Uh, I had a friend say a little while ago that they feel like consuming like fan work works, which are just done by people who are really passionate about whatever it is, whether it's like Hollow Knight fan art or, um, I don't know, supernatural fan fiction or something. Uh, it's done for fun and for free. Right. Um, but that people it's, it feels like are treating this kind of stuff more and more like just Netflix. And just sort of like, you know, rather than engaging with it in a meaningful sort of community based way, and it just feels a little bit less fun to do when it feels like you're kind of shouting into a void and you just get like a handful of likes and that's it. Like, no, it's like, listen, I wrote this story about how, I don't know, this, this one gruff, gravelly voiced man is, is, uh, like likes this other gruff gr I haven't seen Supernatural <laughs> but I understand that people really people who like it really want to yell about it um so so feeling like you know you're just you're putting it out there and then it just kind of people just sort of like read it or just look at it and then and then move on and don't want to like yell at you about it feels a little bit less like, like a fun collaborative experience um but likewise, a lot of things, I think it's just, it just becomes like an endless scroll rather than a, 
rather than an, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to engage with this. I've been trying to make a concerted effort to actually like, at least I'll not, maybe not necessarily all always, but a lot of the artwork from artists, especially artists I know that comes across my social media feeds to try and actually like write a comment about it rather than just a like to actually say, Hey, this is cool. This is such a mood. I want to befriend that little guy you drew, you know, it just feels, it just feels like a more meaningful interaction to actually say, hello, I am putting a word down to tell you I like this thing rather than just clicking like. I click like as well because I understand the needs of the algorithm and that it must be fed in order <laughs> for my friends to thrive, but you know, anyways. Nazi and Supernatural, how dare, says Zathras. L listen, listen. I watched a very comprehensive recap of the final episode of Supernatural, and I feel like that was enough for me to know that it's not for me and that that's okay. Also, hey, Zathras, how's it going? Welcome on in. <laughs> You're having a lovely day. Uh, I, do know, I do know a lot of people who were very invested in that show and therefore felt some kind of way about the last episode, and I... Oh, that's such a, that's such a, you know, I have felt that feeling about other pieces of media before that I don't want to rehash here, but I understand. Uh, after 15 seasons, it's hard not to be invested. I am, I honestly, okay, Zathras, when the season finale of Supernatural was like imminent, I, my response to hearing that news was, is that show still on? It's been so many years. <laughs> I assumed that it had ended like five years at least before that, I think. Because that is that is a long old time. Uh, Samantha says, all I really know about Supernatural is they buried a lot of gays and then super held their gays in the finale. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, spoilers for the finale of, Su of Supernatural, but <coughs> there is there is a brief moment that is I think as as close as it maybe gets to being overtly queer and instantaneously the character who makes a love confession that is a bit queer gets transported to super hell. No. It hurts. It hurts so much. Anyways, um... <clears throat> I'm so I'm so glad that I was not emotionally invested in this because I would have had I would have felt some kind of way I feel like <laughs> oh geez anyways I do feel for anyone who is really looking forward to that being like a good conclusion and then it was what it was um because I've been there and it is it feels really bad when you when you've invested in it and you know like Sticking the landing is one of the hardest parts of doing a story in the first place. It really is. But, um, it also, when, when something's been going on for a really, really long time and they don't stick the landing, that's a lot of, that's a lot of years of investment in that thing to feel, oh, oh no, oh no. Oh, it hurts. Um, and the guy who played Dean question mark is almost 100% a big old homophobe. Okay, I can tell you for sure. Dean is the one who had the... Dean is the one with the, like, he's got short hair. It kind of sticks up. The one whose hair was floppy is his brother, Sam. I know that much. I know that much. I did actually, you know, I did get commissioned once to do a, to do a, uh, portrait of the two, like, the main characters are two brothers on that show. I did get commissioned once to do a Supernatural fan art. I just remembered. Um, and spe specifically, okay, their surname is Winchester. So I drew, I drew them high-fiving each other and saying, go team Winchester. <laughs> That was the that was the brief for that commission. It was very fun. I take commissions, by the way, in case you're curious. If you really want to see me do another supernatural fan art, um, you you can. <laughs> it was really fun. Anyways, um, 
Sometimes I sometimes I like doing like commissions for fan art that is entirely outside of my realm of things that I'm a fan of because it's like I kind of get to play in that universe that otherwise I never would and wouldn't think to. Um same with like I was commissioned to do a Homestuck fan art once. I'm like I don't know who this is, but cool. <laughs> and that was a really fun artwork to do. So, there you go. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm so sorry to, to all the Supernatural fans in the chat. I feel for you. Um, you know, I, listen, I experienced the rise of Skywalker. So, yeah. <laughs> but let us not belabor that point again. It's been, it's been, uh, it's been four-ish years. Has it been more than that? I don't remember. Um... It's been enough years that I feel like I just I just want to move on with my life and forget that that happened because it wasn't very good. Okay. I think it's time for me to need brown paint. I think that's what time it is. I mean, in in GMT it's also 17:51 o'clock, but it's time for me to need brown paint. And uh, I do apologize. I honestly, like, commiserations to anyone who's ever enjoyed, like, a TV show or a film series or a book series that, that is really special to you. And then the ending just sucked butt. I'm sorry. I really am. Um, that's one of the things that scares me the most as a writer of things is if somehow I ever get, like, greenlit to do like a TV show or something that I'm going to end up in a situation where, um, my, uh, my ending is bad. And I would, I would feel terrible about that. I feel, I do. I will say again, I do think that endings are one of the hardest things to have to write. Um, there's a lot of, you've got to, you've got to weigh up how much stuff do you want to resolve? How many things need to be resolved? You've kind of got to make the stakes big enough to give it a feeling of finality, but do you want to leave it a little bit open-ended? Or do you want to be like, okay, and this is the rest of the characters' lives forever, and then they go to heaven and are reunited with their car? You know? <laughs> Archon says Supernatural jumped the shark way before the ending, but eh. Funny you should mention that, Archon. Actually, not that funny, but relevant that you should mention that, Archon. Also, hi, Archon. Welcome in. How are you doing? <laughs> Wonderful to see you. Hello, hello. Hope you're having a great Monday. Um, I actually, I think a lot of people who who were there for the Supernatural finale stopped watching the actual show a long time before the finale. And then... Um, jumped back on as that season was winding down because they wanted to, they, because they were still invested enough to want to know how the show ended, even though they hadn't been watching on like an episode by episode basis for a really long time. But, uh, but yeah, Zathra says, uh, for Supernatural, I was not expecting a satisfying ending. They had some good ending, at, uh, endings as season finales, but as always went on, so all good endings were already used up when they came to an end. Yeah. Well, I think that's the other thing about having, excuse me, just as many seasons of TV as they did, and American seasons as well, which of this type of show are like probably 20 some odd episodes. That is hundreds of episodes of television that they have made. And... It's going to be hard to maintain a level of quality across that much stuff, just regardless, you know? If I produced 200 some odd paintings um, in, you know, I would expect that they're not all going to be absolute masterpieces. And that's the case. Some of the things that I've painted on stream, I decided, actually, I don't think this is very good. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, and sometimes that happens with TV episodes as well. It's just unfortunate, I think, when an example of one of the ones that just didn't quite work out right well that well is, like, the end. Because that, that's kind of the one... That tends to be one of the ones that people really 
notice. Um, I mean, at least it was better than Game of Thrones is ending. Oof. I mean, I can say one good thing about Game of Thrones, and that is that this tea is called Winter is Coming, and I think it was inspired by Game of Thrones, and it's delicious. Also, there was a dude who it turns out was on Game of Thrones. I didn't know this because I didn't watch it, but he was also in the pirate program, and I really like him in the pirate program, and he seems like a really cool guy. So, yay Game of Thrones! <laughs> Anyways, um, but, uh, but yeah, Archon says, imagine a show's ending being so explicitly bad that it ruined how you felt about the entire show. Mm, mm. Yep, have had struggles about that before. Um, I guess it's not, it's not exactly an ending as such, but I guess it's the ending to a number of, like, characters' stories within that universe, but I, I did not like Adventures Endgame. Adventures of it, I can't even say it anymore. I, I didn't like always end, Edamame. <laughs> um, and it kind of made me enjoy, like the previous movies with those characters less because of how much I didn't like it. So yeah, I feel that. I call that the lost effect. I lost is okay. I know about the ending of lost kind of, but I also stopped watching after the first season. But the reason I stopped watching after the first season was that it's very much one of those shows where it's like it's building up to some sort of, or it feels like it's building up to some sort of like reveal as to what the heck is going on. Like, it starts with a mystery premise. And I was listening to some commentary on the DVD of the first season. I think this is after quite a few seasons had come out, or possibly the show would end by that point. I don't know. But um, I was listening to some commentary with, like, the series creators talking about how basically they were like, yeah, we didn't actually have a plan for where all this was going. We were just kind of making it up as we went along. And I was like, oh, well... <laughs> I wonder what else there is that I can watch. Oh, look, there's some repeats of Top Gear on Dave. <laughs> uh, anyways. Um, but, uh, oh no, Zathra says that the Game of Thrones ending really ruined a lot of the show because, oh, so much stuff was suddenly, simply, simply, suddenly pointless. No, that's so unsatisfying. Oh no, I'm so sad. <laughs> Uh, Archon says, I was laughing hysterically when the finale came out, and I just pointed at the episode and said, remember when I said they fundamentally altered, uh, Danny's character and it was gonna be a problem eventually? Sounds like it became a problem. I seem to remember that. <laughs> um... Samantha says, see, at the start we were lied to that they did have a plan, that there was an answer to all the mysteries. Mmm! I don't like it. As a writer, I don't like it. I feel like... I want to say we can take all of these things as object lessons in how not to write, but, like, I don't even know if it's as simple as that, because these are people who actually get paid to do this. I don't get paid to do this. I just get I just get paid to sit around and, like, I, I don't even get paid to sit around and complain about it anymore, because I don't work as an entertainment journalist anymore. I get paid to sit, kind of, to sit around on stream uh, occasionally, but not very much, and that's okay. Uh, I'm just hey! Hey! Z47HR45 cheered. X1. Get paid artist. Hey! So thank you for the biddies out there. So Arthur says, uh, the MCU ended with Infinity War to me. Everything afterwards is fan fiction. That's why the quality is so much worse. Hope the end of the writer strike changes that again. We shall see. We shall see how things how things progress. If we're even still interested in seeing how things progress. Uh I really I really fell off on because I used to be really into a lot of the like superhero media type properties. And I really fell off on the like enjoying and watching of them. Um and that is In no small part due to the fact that they just produced so much and it kind of after a while felt like A, diminishing returns and B, 
like work to sit down and watch them. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to go watch the next Marvel series. It's like, oh my God, there's another Marvel series. They just did one. I need time to marinate with the media I consume, you know? Like, I could watch this new thing, or I could just watch the pirate show again. <laughs> I like I like having the time and space to re-watch the same thing multiple times. Now, this may be just the unique way in which my brain is funded, but I like having, like, the time and space to watch things more than once, if it's something I really, really like, to get more out of it. I can't do that if there's a new series out every month, because unfortunately, I have jobs that aren't just watch TV. And to be honest, I would be bored if my job was just watch TV. <laughs> um, Archon says, plan. George R. R. Martin will write the ending before we get there, right? <laughs> Archon says, narrator. George R. R. Martin has forgotten how to write words. Uh-huh. I mean, have you seen, have you seen how thick those George R. R. Martin books are? They they are thick with like five C's. It takes a lot of time to put that many words down. Believe me, as as a maker of words, sometimes uh, can confirm they are. It is a time consuming, very brain consuming task, and to produce many words of quality is is a large investment of time. But also, George R.R. R. Martin doesn't need to write words anymore, says Samantha. He made enough from the TV show. Oh, okay, cool. So he could just take up macrame in his own time and make make lampshades for fun at home. And you know what? God, I wish that were me. Maybe I just need to write a sprawling fantasy novel that someone will want to adapt. Except they won't want to adapt it because, you know, I will do things like make it, you know really really gay um, and and I don't know if they'll if they'll want to do that <clears throat> anyways ah, Archon says by his own rules we're allowed to handcuff him to a desk in a cabin is that just because he's that what that's what he's into just nobody cares anymore yeah fair you know maybe there's just enough books Anyway, uh, Samantha says, sure, but he doesn't actually have to make them that thick. They've become a bloated mess and could do with some better decision making in what he's writing about. Ooh, is it a case of, is it a case of someone who kind of gets stuck inside their own hype to the point that, like, they don't have an, a, a good editor who is fearless enough to be like, listen, there's too much crap in this chapter let us just trim all of the fat off of this and make it just a tittle touch more concise. Hmm? This is filler. Can we, we can just get rid of this whole scene, George. What are you doing? You're just making worth. Are you getting paid by the word, George? <laughs> uh, Archon says specifically stated if the current book wasn't out by a date past, we can lock him in a cavern until it is finished. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, do, do we want to? Do, are we bothered? I, I'm kind of getting the impression that maybe we're not that bothered. I mean, I'm not, but... That's, uh... That's because I haven't read any of them. Maybe they're very good. I'm sure, I'm, sure the, I'm sure the books are good. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been made into a large, successful TV program. But, uh... But yeah, I don't, I don't know why I never got into the Game of Thrones books, like, before it was a TV program. Because, like, I do like, I do like a fantasy world with, with fancy stuff. Um, I do, I do. But, uh, but yeah, I never really, I never got into them. I don't know why. Oh, no, I know why. Because I was doing a literature degree and I was having to read, like, books that were on my on my curriculum for years, and that kind of killed my ability to just sit down and read novels for fun for a long time. Uh, despite the fact that I worked at a public library for over 10 years. We don't want to, especially if the show was intended, especially not if the show was intended canon. Oh, no. I mean, that, that was a question that I think a lot of people had. I certainly did. Was when the show uh, overtook the the books that had been written whether like 
like, w- were they working off of, like, an outline or a plan? Or was it just kind of a, well, we don't we don't know what was supposed to be next, so we're kind of making it up as we go along. I'm not actually sure what what was the case there. But again, that's probably because I didn't watch the show or read the books. Uh, Zathra says, I hope they remake the last seasons at some point after the actual books are out and we can simply forget about the ones we know now. <laughs> I mean, I mean, considering, I think, I think it's not out of the realm of possibility that there may be some kind of additional filmic or televisual Game of Thrones media at some point in the future. And I say this because of the rate at which things get remade, rebooted, and just adapted again or sequelized and all that jazz in, in like film and TV now. Um, which I honestly find kind of bleak in many ways that it feels like it's all reboots, remakes and, uh, and sequels instead of new things. Like I, I was, I was like a couple weeks ago years old when I learned that I went to look up, I had the theme tune from the TV show Night Court stuck in my head, if you remember Night Court, and that's how I discovered that they've been, that they actually remade the series Night Court. And there's a new, like, re-revival series of Night Court on now. And I'm given to understand that, notwithstanding the one episode, which I haven't seen yet, that has my celebrity crush in it as a guest star, um, notwithstanding that, um, (laughs) that it's, it's pretty mid- but, uh, but yeah, um, but, uh, the theme tune from the old Night Court from the 80s is still a banger. If you don't know it, it is a fantastic piece of music. I'll try and remember to put it in the Discord later if I remember. I won't remember, but I'm gonna put a link to the Discord anyway, so hold me accountable if you want to, um, cause it slaps. Anyways, um, but yeah, the, the new sort of, like, revived series, eh, See also the oh the new revived Frasier series they did, no bad <laughs> apparently very bad. It's just like, but it in many ways it's cheaper and it has a built-in audience because you're basing it on an existing story rather than creating something brand new, um, which kind of feels like, you know it's it's kind of media becoming sort of a snake consuming and reproducing its own tail or something i'm sorry my metaphors are bad but um <laughs> it's just this this idea of just continuous sort of reproducibility as opposed to ever choosing to innovate and then canceling the thing and then you know when you do innovate and like create a new series and a new story and whatever that stuff gets canceled yay <laughs> It's so bleak. As someone who would really, 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 really dearly love to uh, be out there telling some stories, um, it just feels like I don't know whether there will be a place for me ever. (sighs) Sag. Because these kinds of things, it feels like, are just harder to do like new stuff which is frankly heckin grim anyways okay i think that's pretty much all of the books except for this one that i forgot to paint um literally just forgot to paint this book here so guess what how about i paint it now because i'm gonna um what color does that want to be maybe green it could be green i'll make it green okay Just going to pick up some green. I'm just going to use this greenish black, because why not? Because I literally forgot to paint in this book jacket or book cover, whatever. I don't know. I forgot to paint in this book because I'm stupid. Anyways, um, (laughs) one moment, please. I need to mute. All right. I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, what else? What else? What else? Okay. So I think, I think that'll do for all of the teeny tiny little details on the little book jackets, which means, 
I can get on with doing the line weight for all of the books. Oh, good. <laughs> this isn't going to take another nine hours. I think I might drop a quick BRB before I do that. Just, just to, just to give, give us a moment to kind of breathe, say we finished a step and we're going to take a minute before we move on to the next one. Um, so I hope you enjoy the BRB screen in the meantime. Um, and I'll be back in a minute. And you're all breathtaking. Okay, no, but real talk. Um, are we live right now? Uh, and I ask this because, okay, my camera's having a moment. Hold up, hold up. There we go. Okay. Oh, jeez. Um, we are. Okay. Okay, because my... My, um... On... Uh, can I, can I get you? Okay, there we go. My, uh... My Twitch dashboard stream manager was like offline and uh, I stepped away from the computer for the BRB to have a little chat with my moderator slash spouse <laughs> and uh, I came back and my, my stream manager page on my Twitch dashboard said I was offline. So I had... A little scare. So I'm really glad to know that we are actually still up and running. Oh, thank a goodness for that. My goodness gracious. That was, that was frightening. Uh, but we're fine. Uh, but yes, thank you for the confirmations, y'all. I appreciate it. Uh, we are live, but we are not, but we are not orthogonal. Okay. Is that good? Speak for yourself. I've been dead for decades, Sledge. Darling, honey bunch, are you okay? Should I be scared? Did I marry a ghost? In which case, honestly, that's kind of cool. I'm kind of into that. <laughs> Brains. Oh, jeez. Uh, is it, is it, isn't it? Is it? that a brand of... I think that's a type of beer. Hold up. Yeah, it is. Okay, well, we can, we can take care of that, sweetheart. We can get you a... Uh, I'm sure we can get you a pint of Brains beer. It's from Wales, I believe. Um, as in the... Oh, as in the... Um, oh, yes, of course. There's also... There's also... Is it Mr. Brains? The, uh, the, the meat product that repeats on you. Is that Mr. Brains? Am I remembering that correctly? Hold up. I'm going to have to look that up real quick. Um... Yes, Mr. Brains. Mr. Brains. It has a name that is uh, is also a slur, but is also just a word for a type of meatball. Um, but there is also a type of beer that is Brains. Um, it's from Wales, I believe. And, um, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um... And here, oh, I was going to say, and here they are, but hold up. This is my Instagram page. Here they are. That's enough of that. And uh, here's Brains Beer, which I have not had because I am not a beer person. But anyways, um, so uh, one of those is apparently what Sledge was talking about. <sighs> I really, you know, I there would be so much public outcry if they, like, renamed the meatball, whose name is also a slur. But, you know... Maybe they could just rename the meatball whose name is also a slur. Just a thought. Just a thought. Anyways. <clears throat> I'm gonna keep painting. That's what I'm gonna do. Alright. Um, do I want to... Since I've got all this brown paint here, maybe I should just start with doing the like lion weight for the books that are brown. That feels... That feels like it makes the most sense. Um, so I'm just gonna... Was the meatball called that first, though? Oh, yeah, it definitely was. It definitely was. Because um, it originally just referred to, like, a bundle of, like... St it, there, is a, there is an etymology to... There is an etymology that I do not remember. 1843, says Sledge. Did you know... That custard powder was invented in 1834. 
Samantha says, what? There's a meatball that is named for a slur? Why? How? It's not named... Okay, the slur comes after the name of the meatball. But it is also... It is also, um, often... Has often been used as a not nice word. Um, as well as being the name of a meatball. Anyways. Um, I can elaborate off stream. I don't want to, I don't want to belabor the point too much because it's, um, yeah. Anywho. Anywho. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna darken down this brown paint a little bit. First of all. So the, so the line weight has a little bit more, you know, weight to it. Because I think that'll be a good... Okay. Um, anyways, custard powder was invented in 1834, I believe, by Alfred Bird. Because his wife was allergic to eggs. And I found this out recently because I needed to know... Essentially, I needed, to, I needed to know how old custard powder was um, for very important reasons. And it turns out that it's, it's, that, it's that old. So, cool. Um, mostly because I wanted to have custard with a historical recipe, but I didn't want to have to make custard from scratch with, like, eggs and stuff. Because that's faffy. And... If I'm already cooking something else from scratch, do I also want to be making custard from scratch? Possibly not. Sometimes I like putting in the monumental amount of effort to create something, like, fully from scratch, and sometimes I really just don't, <laughs> you know? Sometimes I want to, like, half scratch things, and that's okay. I mean, of course that's okay, but, you know. Oh, so satisfying. Okay, it looks weird when only, like, two of the books have line weight, but it does make it feel like they're kind of coming to life a little bit more, which is nice. Hopefully I can, I can get these lines to look, you know, even and pleasant. I hope anyways. If some of these books look a little bit wonky, well, that's okay, too. Because, honestly, some of these books are probably pretty old, may not have been stored super well for their entire lives before they arrived at this bookshop. And so they might be a little bit wacky. But that's alright. Doesn't mean they're not still worthy of love. Just like me. Anyways. <laughs> tee hee. Tee hee. Okay. I think, does that make, does that make sense? Does that make sense? I think, I feel like that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Okay. This book is kind of tilted at a very weird, was a very weird angle to try and paint in, but I, th I think I figured it out. Okie dokie. And then there's this little guy. Well, this, this is a tall boy, but this tall boy is a fairly skinny tall boy. A bean pole of a book, shall we say. I wonder what it's about. I wonder if it's good. Should I read it? I don't know. There we go. Yay! <laughs> ah, this feels so satisfying. This is a... This is... I really like this stage of the painting process. This, this, this is a stage I find... I'm just going to put the palette card away. Um, cause it, I'm, I'm just going to keep knocking it over at this point cause I'm having to turn the piece a lot, but, um, I find this to be a really satisfying part of the process. More so I think than the initial sort of like drawing in of the books is that this, this is, this is one of the stages where you really start to, f I feel like you really start to see the work feeling like it's coming to life. Um... And that's something that I really, that is just, it's just a really satisfying point in, in the, the life cycle of the making of for me. 
is when I can kind of see what it wants to look like when it's done. And I'm really starting to see that now. And that feels good. That's a, that's a satisfying feeling. So hooray. <laughs> Yay. Congratulations me, I guess. I don't know. Anywho. Okay. Anywho, so I am I am kind of hopeful. In fact, you know what? No, I'm not hopeful. I'm insistent that um this time Thursday we will have started a new painting. And I'm thinking of hopefully doing something that we can get sort of started and finished in one stream, just as a contrast to this absolute monster of a work. Um I think a little instant gratification will feel good after all this, honestly. <laughs> Anyways, if you cannot make your custard powder at home, <laughs> store bought is fine, it says Samantha. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. I, I have never, I wonder, I wonder how one would go about making homemade custard powder. I don't know. I mean, I guess, like, the one of the main ingredients is corn flour, because obviously that's what gives it that thickness and turns it into a fun sort of non-Newtonian situation. That's one of the things I love the most about custard powder is its, it's non-Newtonian properties. They're very fun. Hello, Tom. Welcome in. How are you doing? It's lovely to see you. Welcome, welcome. I mean, in fact, I think we might have some custard tonight if I play my cards right. I think we've got enough milk. I think we've got some custard powder. I think some custard might get made this eve. Um, but there is something, there is something immensely satisfying about the, the properties of custard powder. If you take custard powder and you dissolve it in some milk, but just enough to make, to have it be a thick paste, you get the, 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 the best, I think, and the most experience of the weirdness of custard powder in as much as if you, if you sort of like, if you, if you scoop it up with a spoon, you'll notice, oh, it's really like, it feels really super thick and like hard to push your spoon through. But then if you like, if you like turn your spoon, it will just flow off of it like a super smooth fluid. It's the funnest stuff. Oobleck. Exactly, Samantha. You know it. It's the funnest. I love a non-Newtonian fluid. It's just like, ah, what, you mean, you mean there's rules to how fluids are supposed to perform? Well, tough biscuits. I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> Tom says, great to catch you. I'm loving this painting. Thank you very much. And thank you also, Salt, for the lurk. Thank you, thank you. I hope you're having a lovely lurk time. Uh, but, 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 but. Hope you're having a lovely Monday, indeed. Um... Where where else are there some brown books that need some line weight? Oh, these ones are so teensy. These ones are so teensy. I'm having to be very careful here because this book is very thin. Oh, oh, geez. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's silly, but I do. I do honestly sometimes get quite nervous when I'm doing the line weight on like the really, the really tiny details. Oh, thank you for the hydrate, Tom. I shall. I'll take a sip of this one. Thank you. I have three beverages now, by the way. This is, I'm trying to get to the end of this bag of coffee. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm trying to get to the end of this bag of coffee. All right. One beverage down. Hooray. Because to be honest, I've been finding it quite mid, though I will say it was a little bit better today when I had it with whole milk instead of skimmed. Normally, I like a skimmed milk with my with my at-home beverages, but I happen to need to buy whole milk for um, uh, a recipe this weekend. And so I've had leftovers. Um, and uh, so I've just been using it in my coffee. And it is a slight improvement on this, this one coffee, which uh, to be honest, I just, I just didn't vibe with. Sometimes you just don't vibe with a coffee and that's okay. This, this was one for me that wasn't, that just isn't quite hitting. Um, 
That's fine. Hopefully the next coffee that I get will be better. There we go. Anyways. Um, yum! Brown hot potion, says Tom. Hell yeah. Here's another one. This one is Barry's tea. It's very nice. Mmm. Yum. Um, Sather says, when a human doesn't follow rules, they are a dingus. But when a fluid doesn't follow rules, it's super cool. Feels not fair, but I 100% get that. <laughs> to be fair, Sather, sometimes, sometimes I think it is entirely cool of a human, depending on the rules and the circumstances. Sometimes I think it is very cool of in indeed for a human to just say F the rules. Because sometimes the rules are arbitrary and stupid. And honestly, if you as a human being f figure out a way to also be non-Newtonian, like, uh, that's freaking cool. <laughs> Yum, bean water, says Cassa. Hell yeah. <laughs> also, hey, Cassa, how's it going? Lovely to see you. Welcome on. We are just talking about non-Newtonian fluids, apparently. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your, your opinions about it, um, my, my beverages today are pretty much fully Newtonian fluids. There's no fun oobleck situations happening with my tea. It is delicious, though. It's Barry's tea, which comes from the lovely, our lovely neighbor nation of Ireland. Um, I asked Barry very nicely and he said I could have a box of tea. So thank you, Barry, for your delicious tea. Anyways, um, but I do, I do quite like Barry's tea. I think it's a very agreeable, uh, I think it's a very agreeable brew. So yeah, enjoying that. Um, are there any brown books hiding in here? Yes, there's the tiny one. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Ha! <laughs> Having to make my lines so small on <laughs> these shelves because the books are so teensy. If you want to live a non-Newtonian life, I recommend moving to Mercury, says Samantha. You know, is tempting. Is very tempting. But um, I guess it depends on, like, what's the likelihood of me being able to get a mortgage on Mercury? Is it better than Oxfordshire? Because I feel like it probably would be. In which case, ah, it's tempting. But also, what's the internet connection like? Would I still be able to stream? Most importantly. Anyways, Aoife, hello. Welcome in. Lovely to see you. How are you doing? How's your Monday going? Uh, Tom says, I have to get back to celebrating my partner's birthday, but it was nice dropping by. Oh, happy birthday, Tom's partner. I hope that, uh, I hope that they're having a lovely, a lovely celebration and a lovely birthday. And that's really, really sweet. And thank you so much for dropping by and please convey, uh, please convey birthday wishes to them as well. Yay. Congrats. Um, uh, Cassa says, hi, I've been lurking for at least an hour and decided to say hi. Thank you. Thank you for emerging from the bushes and, and conveying your hellos. It's lovely to see you. And as always, uh, any lurkers hanging out in, in the stream, uh, we love you. We love you and, and you're awesome. You're all breathtaking. Um, <laughs> Aoife says, doing great. Uh, have been struggling with a boss all day, but finally beat her. Congratulations on beating the boss. That is the coolest and the best thing that you can do. And we love to see it. Hell yeah. Congratulations. Well done. Okay. I think I'm going to do this sort of gold, golden, the like golden, ochery, yellowy, orangey situation books next. Um, so I'm going to pull up some of this burnt yellow ochre. And a little bit of whatever they call yellow in this. I think it might just be lemon. I think it might be lemon. Is it lemon? No, it's sun yellow. But next to it is mango. I'm going to pull, I'm going to add a little bit of mango to warm it up as well. And then a little bit more of the burnt yellow ochre. Actually, maybe quite a bit more of the burnt yellow ochre. To give it uh, a, go a goodly amount of depth. However, however, is that a little bit bright? Okay. I've added back a little bit more sun yellow and actually I feel like that's made it less bright somehow. Oh, I think it's actually just effectively made it a better color. So good. Good job me. <laughs> Yay. Well done. Okay. 
Okay, hopefully that's saturated enough, but not so saturated that it's going to steal steal the sunshine. Um, anyways. Uh, beat her earlier, Sisypha, but died afterwards to a lingering spell of hers. Oh my god, that happened to me when I was, with the last time I had to do Fluke Nest on my current run of Hollow Knight. That happened to me, where I beat, I, not, not Fluke Nest, the Fluke Marm fight. I beat Fluke Marm, but then immediately died to one of the flukes. Ah! Oh, and apparently that counted as her having survived. No! Dare I ask what game it was out of curiosity? Um... Samantha says the average ping to Mercury is about 5.1 minutes, and for significant parts of the year, there is no direct connection. Also, there are no mortgage lenders on Mercury, also no landlords. But, Samantha, that sounds kind of great. If I could just... If I could just build myself a cabin there with my non-existent carpentry and building skills and being a mediocre architect at best, if, uh... If Animal Crossing Paradise, Happy Home Paradise DLC is any indication, uh, the number, oh god, the number of villagers who've requested holiday homes from me and giving me, given me a not insignificant amount of, like, in-game currency for them, and I literally gave them a room with a bed and some stuff in it and was like, well, I've been at this for 30 minutes and I want to go do something else. I'm so sorry, Rocket. I guess your house just sucks. <laughs> Whoops, anyways. Um <laughs> ha -ek. Also no houses, yeah, but yeah, but Casa, I could I could attempt to build a house. It would be bad, but I could. Um There are no other humans, just some robots cruis cruising around. Sounds pretty cozy to me, says Arthur. That sounds wonderful. I love robots. They're so they're so lovely and sweet and they go beep boop. Um and I want to befriend them all. Except the ones that steal your art. Those ones are bad. Um uh, Dark Souls 2 says Eva, ooh, I am so impressed by anyone who actually, who, who actually manages to, like, do Dark Souls, uh, because it is so intimidating to me of a game franchise. <laughs> Super scary. So I am, I am very impressed. Congratulations on doing it. Hell yeah. You should feel very proud. Um... First boss that was really hard, so at first I was really happy. Hell yeah, you should feel very good about yourself. Nice. First ever DS2 playthrough. Yay, congrats. <laughs> Are there drones on Mercury, Samantha asks. I thought there had been flybys, but I don't r recall any rover landings. I don't know. I don't know. Any Anyone, anyone in the chat who has a special interest in space stuff uh, feel free to chime in if you know the answer. Um, Aoife says, I really enjoy it. I'm just a bit disappointed about easy bosses, but I'm also quite over-leveled due to exploration. Ah, see, when, when I've played games where you can just, like, wander around and level up a lot, I have been known to accidentally wander around too much and level up too much and then go do a boss fight that's supposed to be a hard boss fight. And I'm on, like, level 71, and the boss is on, like, level 15. And I'm like, oh. So he's like, ha ha ha, at last we meet. Prepare to, prepare to meet your doom, says the, says the boss fight character. And meanwhile, I'm like, I cast Fireball once, and he's on, like, 10% health. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Mars is entirely populated by robots. Oh man, that sounds great. I want to go to there. Uh, Zather says, without cool robots, I don't want to be there anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everywhere is better with cool robots to be your friend. Uh, Mars is sadly Newtonian. No! Also, it's, I mean, it is nice and cold. I believe, which I do appreciate as someone who overheats fairly easily in the summer. But, um, but, oh man, a Newtonian planet. Boring. So boring. That's just, I mean, you know, that's like the pumpkin spice of planets. It's so basic. Anyways. Speaking of, uh, I really do like pumpkin spice matcha. So, glass houses. Pumpkin spice matcha in oat milk is the bee's knees, friends. If you've never had it, uh, 
500 out of 10 to recommend. <laughs> Anyways, gonna take a sip of the this tea because I have so many. Mmm. Does it taste like Game of Thrones? I don't know, but it does taste like, it tastes like ginger and mint and a little earthy and like it's probably doing good things for my body. So love that for me. Anyways, um, Eva says I beat 30 out of 42 bosses now. Only one took more than five tries and 14 I beat on first tries, but I'm having a blast with the game. Is there like an extra hard mode you can do if it doesn't feel hard enough? Um, cause I do, I do appreciate sometimes the, the satisfaction of, of having to do a boss fight like a bunch of times before getting it can sometimes feel really, really good. Um, though depending on whether it's, sometimes it's, it's, it's challenging and you just need to, you just need to figure out the strategy for it. And then other times it's just like annoying. <laughs> Those ones I don't like so much. Does anybody remember when I was playing, I was playing one of the Mega Man. I can't recall if it was Mega Man 2 or Mega Man 3 here on stream. And, um, there was a point at which <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> there was a point at which I entered a new room and I thought that the room was just some platforming and then... I just got jump scared by a robot dragon that instantly murdered me. <laughs> just this huge robot dragon. I was like, oh, this is a boss room, apparently. But there was no build up to like, there's a boss fight here. I was just like, oh, these platforms disappear after you jump on them. So you've got to be quick. So I was like moving along and then suddenly just like, this massive dragon robot just utterly obliterated me. <laughs> so <funny>. Anyways. <coughs> Cold, but also lacking in atmosphere. Or protect- okay, or protection from solar radiation. Because, like, the first one I feel like you could solve with a few, like, really- like, a couple of really nice lamps and maybe some throw- throw cushions kind of thing to make it feel a little bit co more comfortable and homey, but the protection from solar radiation is a bit more of a uh, it's, it's a bit more of um, a deal breaker for me personally. Um, <laughs> Eva says, glad I finally gave it a go. There are new game pluses afterwards, but also just replaying and not over leveling sounds more enticing to me. Oh, absolutely. There's always, there's always fun new ways. Always fun new ways to go back and replay stuff. I really like things that have some, some measure of replayability. Cause if I really like a game, I feel a little bit sad if it feels like it's like a one and done experience. And there are some games that I've played that are very much one and done experiences that I'm really glad that I did. But I really like games that I feel like I can go back and revisit and do things a little bit differently and see how that shakes out or like, you know, sort of challenge myself in new ways. Like, like Hollow Knight, for instance, in our very stupid We're Rescuing Cloth This Time run. <laughs> Anyways, um, oh no. Samantha says, Sammy enters dungeon. Roll perception. Nat 1. Seems safe. Mega Man gets obliterated by dragon. <laughs> yep. I think, I think we clipped that. I think we clipped that. That might be, there might be a clip of that. Um, and if there is, uh, yeah, that was a fun room. Anyways. Oh man. Sometimes I feel like my dice are cursed. So I do play, I do play Dungeon Dragons. Um, I do, I have a regular, I have a regular campaign that I'm a member of the, the party for. And I also do sometimes do like one-off one shots with other friends. Um, and I swear to gosh, the proportion to which my, my regular D20 seems to roll in that one, it seems like more than 5%. It really does. So... What gives dice? Like, I love my dice because they're very pretty, but, um, please stop rolling nat ones unless it's funny, but, uh, sometimes it just makes me sad. Anyways. <coughs> there we go. Oh, Bath says, lurking and listening, but just wanted to say this is looking stunning. Oh, Bath, thank you. Also, I hope you're having a lovely lurk and a wonderful Monday. Well, thank you for lurking. I much appreciate it. 
I'm gonna take another sip out of my tea. Mmm, that is stone cold. <laughs> Etha says, I'm not much for a story game player. I rather watch those on YouTube. I tend to drift off during cutscenes if I play such games. That's fair, that's fair. I do I do like some storyline games, though. Um I don't know. It all kind of depends for me. It depends on what the storyline is. It depends on depends on how much reading out loud I have to do if I'm streaming it, because I do like doing a character voice, but I also will run out of the ability to read out loud after a while. Oh, these books these books are so difficult to do, but I feel like they really need line weight, otherwise they just look bad, so Oh no. Oh no. Struggles. I made these too small. But this bookshelf needed to be here. Um Uh Beth says also several of my friends and I have all have the same D20 brand and they have a suspiciously high Nat 20 rate. Interesting. I wonder, I wonder if it would be worth doing a little, like, science around it and just counting out the, like, the, the rate at which they nat 20 and seeing whether or not, like, how much over the percentage it should be it ends up actually being. Hmm. Hmm. That is a little bit sus. That is a little bit sus. Um. <laughs> oh, no. Samantha says, I once did a campaign as a shadow sorcerer, which meant I rolled almost every attack with advantage. I rolled at least four snake eye double nat ones with advantage over that campaign. Oh no. Oh no. That is genuinely impressive. Truly it is. Also, oh no. I'm so sorry to hear that. But, you know, nat ones happen, and nat ones aren't necessarily a bit. I mean, it depends on... It depends, really, I think, on what are you rolling a nat one on, because sometimes you can roll a nat one, and it just makes things more fun. I'm not averse to rolling a nat one, but sometimes when I'm just like, I roll to befriend this NPC, and I roll a nat one, I'm like, no! Because <laughs> now my character, who who is really trying hard to be cool, is just going to embarrass themselves. <laughs> Or potentially antagonize someone who might have otherwise been a, a friend. Sad. That always feels a little bit sad. Um, but yeah. Oop. Oop. Okay. This is honest to goodness. The scariest part of this painting is this this stupid bookshelf. I should have made all of the books on this bookshelf much, just just made them all be like super wide books, and for some reason I didn't, and that was real silly of me. Um. <sighs> oh well, nearly there, nearly there. Almost done with them. I thank, a goodness. Okay. Okay, these ones are easier because these are pretty much all just rectangles. Book is just rectangle after all. There's my pro tip for any aspiring artists out there. Book, book is just rectangle. <laughs> Samantha says the secret to befriending is to just be a bard and have such high charisma and expertise and persuasion that even a nat one still comes out to like a twelve plus. Oh, holy heck! That's that's very good. I mean, to be fair, I would say my my current. Uh, my current, like, main Dungeon Dragon character is fairly charismatic. Um, in terms of their stats, I think s s specifically, hilariously, for some reason, they have, like, a plus six to intimidation. Um, I do not consider them to be a particularly intimidating looking character. It's just I randomized a lot of my stats when I made this character. And so it's just sort of how, how things have shaken out. But, like, this is this is what they look like, okay? Like, yes, they are holding a knife. 
and they're wearing a badass leather biker vest, but also look at this absolute bundle of sunshine. Are you intimidated? <laughs> Truly, are you are you plus six to intimidation intimidated by this little buddy? Because, like, what? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> um... Beth says, or be a charismatic rogue with expertise in deception and persuasion. Mm. I I did be I did play a bard once, in but that was in that was in a, a single shot, and I kind of I would love to revisit the character that I did for that because they were so fun. Um, but that was. That was me with really playing with conventions, I think, because they were, they were a bard who was a, they were a water genasi, but instead of, you know, like the, 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 the dungeon dragon kind of character convention is that if you're a half something, it presupposes that the other half of your parentage is a uh, human. And I was like, well, wait, is there any reason why a halfling couldn't have a child who was, a, who was like a, a water genasi? And so I, I created a character who was a halfling water genasi, and they were so much fun. Um, I just, I, I, I basically, I, the, the way that the stats ended up working is I made them like specifically just a little bit taller than like the tall end of halfling. Um... And then adjusted some of their other stats accordingly to kind of, to make sure that they didn't have, like, unfair advantage of, like, extra, like, features, but to reflect the fact that one of their parents was a halfling. So I think I sort of got rid of one of their sort of, like, Jadassi advantages and gave them one of the halfling advantages and that kind of thing, um, which was a lot of fun to do. But, um, but also it was, it was just super fun. But, uh, but that bard was fun. One of their, you know, cause you can, you can give your bard like the in instruments that they play if they're an instrument playing bard. And this bard had a pipe organ. <laughs> and I basically, I gave them like a bag of holding that was effectively like a pocket, um, like a pocket studio. So they kept their pipe organ and they would just like crawl inside <laughs> And would just practice in there, so it was, like, soundproof. <laughs> it was very stupid and so much fun. I just love the idea of them just having a pipe organ, especially because they lived on a ship, um, which is so impractical. <laughs> Anyways. Um, cute drawing, says Silly. Oh, thank you very much. I'm trying my best. Um, Beth says, my current rogue... Now that she's past level 11, level 11, cannot roll lower than a 24 on those. Jesus, Murphy, that is good. Uh, Samantha says, rogue is also good because reliable talent means nat 1 is still a 10 on the... Why am I not playing a rogue? I almost played a rogue. And I ended up deciding to be a sorcerer instead. And don't get me wrong, I love being a sorcerer, but I also... All of, like, the fun extra features, I always forget to use them. <laughs> really bad at remembering all the things that I could technically do. Mm, anyways. Um, she just lies all the time in practice and literally no one can tell. Wow, she sounds fun. <laughs> Samantha says, Pathfinder does that better. You can literally be half any two races. I love that. I don't see, I don't see why not. I mean, but again, you know, as long as you're, as long as you, personally, I think you can do whatever you want with regard to that as long as you, um, as long as you don't do it, as long as you don't do it maliciously giving yourself, like, an additional advantage with regard to the two sets of features that you would get from those two races, um, I, as long as you're, as long as, like, you've thought it through and your DM's cool with it, like, it's, it's, it's just stupid games that you're playing at home with your friends, you can just... As long as you talk about it with your friends, you can kind of just do what you want with it. You know, you can say stuff the rules and be like, no, I want to be, I want to be a half elf, but also half whatever the elephant guys are called and figure out what that would look like. You know, why not? <laughs> that, okay, I'm picturing that and it's super bizarre. 
Um, anyways, <laughs> as, as Twitchy's or Precious Rogue says, if you can't tell from my name, I like rogues. Really? I'd never have guessed. Um, Samantha says, College of Eloquence Bard also effectively gets reliable talent specifically for deception and persuasion. Ooh. And you can have them play the pipe organ. Hey, Alba, welcome in. How are you doing? Lovely to see you. Welcome, welcome. We're just talking about Dungeons and Dragons and and that sort of thing. I'm sure, you know, maybe you've heard of it. <laughs> um, Samantha says, you'd be surprised how shitty people get about what other people's stupid games they play with their friends includes, despite it not affecting them at all. Oh, I believe it's super a lot, Samantha. Case in point, it's a slightly different medium and a slightly different genre. However, I do have experience of playing a Pokemon game where other people can see me doing it. And boy, howdy, did people have opinions about the Pokemons that I put on my team, my stupid team that affects nobody else but me, and the fact that I didn't evolve the one character, even though who cares? I think that its unevolved form is cuter. And it, I've literally leveled it up to like a hundred, so I can literally kick God's butt with it if I want to. Leave me alone. <laughs> like, who cares? And also, yes, if other people pl want to play a Dungeon Dragon in ways that that you personally don't, that's fine. There is, so when I play Dungeon Dragon, for instance, also, hey, Mr. Hangman, how's it going? Lovely to see you. Welcome on in. <laughs> Hope you're having a lovely Monday. Um, Alva says, I've never played a D&D &D in my life. Am I... Am I being gaslit right now? <laughs> Are you sure about that? <laughs> the author says, I got distracted. Did someone say d and I'm in. Yes. Um, <laughs> if you didn't include Sylveon on your team, are you even playing? Aw, Sylveon's wonderful, though. One of my absolute faves. Um, largely because they are adorable and the trans pride Pokemon, but still. Anyways, uh, one time I leveled a Pichu up to 100 and never evolved it, says Mr. Hangman. Exactly, that's what I did with Oshawott, and it was very, very fun. Oshawott was my special little guy who could literally kick God's butt. So, there you go. <laughs> Anyways, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, so when I play Dungeon Dragon, I am a big fan of having, having a Dungeon Dragon world where you've got just creatures of all kinds wandering around making friends with each other just living in you know little villages and going fishing and eating snacks and learning magic spells and being you know having their having their respective churches and markets and and doing all of the things and you've got like elephant people walking around you've got turtle people walking around you've got elves you've got dwarves you've got ogres and all that jazz and they can all be friends with each other and it's just a good time. Not everybody wants to play Dungeon Dragon that way. Some some people are like, "No, I think all, I think our characters are all going to be human people." And and if you want to be another creature, there's going to be like consequences. And I'm like, that kind of gameplay isn't for me. I, I want to, I just, damn it, sometimes I just want to imagine what it would be to be, you know, like a giant turtle person who is also a wizard. Why not? You know, as Lux says also, hi Lux, welcome in narwhals in evening wear. Exactly. That is referencing the, um, the, uh, improvised RPG that we did uh, over on Kirby's channel a little while ago, which if you haven't seen it, it is on his YouTube channel. Uh, I will pop, hang on, I'll do a shout out to Kirby, because if you haven't seen this, it was, uh, it was absolutely freaking crazy, <laughs> and you should go watch it, because it was a lot of fun. Anyways, um, but also, yes, hi Lux, it's lovely to see you, welcome on in. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's that, that's the kind of D&D that I personally prefer, but some people prefer a D&D &D situation where, to be honest, like, you fight monsters and stuff, but your characters are pretty much all people, they want it to be grounded in a somewhat more recognizable world, and hey, if that's your bag, then cool. You know? Um, 
but it's not mine and that's okay. And that's not to say that like either of those two D and D groups are doing it wrong. They're just playing in slightly different universes. And that's, that's cool. Um, <laughs> Zathra says a believable high fantasy, high magic world. Hell yeah. Kobe. Hello. Welcome in. Uh, they say, I really want to play with the chef feet in D and D. Oh Yes. I built the character shamelessly ripped off from Delicious and Dungeon. Watch it. I've heard about it. That sounds fun. Uh, I really want to try thinking about cooking monsters. Oh my goodness. Amazing. Uh, Zathra says, I don't think I've ever played a human in any D&D game ever. I think there are... I think there are incentives in terms of, like, stats and features that you get for playing a human. Or at least there's, like, a human variant, I think, that you can play that makes it more interesting statistically speaking but the least interesting thing i can think of as a DD character is like oh what are you playing a human fighter i'm like you can do cool things with that character type but i don't want to do it personally i would love to see other people do it but personally i would like to do be like you know a little goblin or um you know, this person is blue. Um, I am a forest giant. You know, that that's that's my idea of a fun time, personally, with the D&Ds, is getting to pretend to be eight feet tall. And have a, a vague European accent. That's my very first D&D character, was a, was a Fjordborg. Uh, she was a druid. She was married to my spouse's D&D character, which was very, very fun uh, to get to, to roleplay being married to the person I'm married to. Ooh la la. <laughs> Who was playing a dwarf. So she's like twice as tall as he is. It's very cute. There was a lot of... A lot of lifting and carrying. Also very cute. Um, but that was a very fun character. Anyways, um... Alba says, making my characters have been pretty limited in the past, uh, because for using, oh yeah, D&D Beyond, kind of, the free stuff in D&D Beyond doesn't give you a ton of options, um, uh, but I'm a turtle boy, in thought, because gave him their good fit, oh, a turtle, hell yeah, I love that for you, funnily enough, they're also a chef, that is adorable, and I love them very much, anywho, very, very, very cute, um, uh, Zathra says, yeah, in, in D&D 5th edition, humans are great because of the extra feet, but that's boring. Personally, I agree, but, I mean, a lot of people do. And I do think that, like, the breadth of human experience is such that you can certainly still craft an interesting character with an interesting backstory, and yada, yada, yada. I just like the idea of getting to be, you know, hi, I'm a rabbit now. <laughs> Why not? I just think it's fun and cute, but that's because I'm fun and cute. I don't know. Anyways, um... Uh, <laughs> Chad is moving too fast. Ugh. D d by all means, keep talking. Um, Samantha says the most milk toast race combined with the most milk toast class. Unless you are doing it as a bit to deconstruct it, you're kind of failing at the promise of D and D. There, I just feel like there's so much potential beyond that, you know. But that being said, there are definitely fun things you can do within that as well. Kobe says, I try to start a character around a nugget of an idea, usually shamelessly stolen, and then build around it. I tell you what, the la like, my, literally my main sort of, like, regular campaign character right now I was basically randomized. I went to fast character and just randomized all of the, all of the features and traits and everything, um, and then just tweaked it until it felt like a character that I liked. Uh, and that's how I ended up <laughs> with them. Whoops. Um, but yeah, a nugget of an idea is good. Uh, I'm playing as an ooze, says Zathros. Hello, I love it. Who crawled into literal Frankenstein's monster, piling it to have a brain and using it to cast psychic spells. Pathfinder 2nd Edition hype. That is wild and I love that for you. Kobe says, FD and D Beyond. If it was a single subscription for everything, I'd be interested, but no, gotta squeeze that cat. That's the thing. That's the thing that really annoys me is that they're like physical books that I own. And it's like asking me to purchase again on D and D Beyond. I'm like, nah. I think they're I think that is being changed so that so that you can if you have a book book, 
you don't have to rebuy stuff on D&D Beyond, but to be honest, I'm just used to not really using it for the most part. Um, except if I happen to have a character that I've created that more or less fits things that are available on D&D Beyond. And I've, I've fudged things here and there because I'm like, well... I would like my warlock patron to not be the one patron type that's available on D&D Beyond, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take the features of that and then just reskin it as something that I think is more fun. Um, which is what I did with my warlock character. Because there was only one, um, patron type available, even though there are, like, multiple different types of patron you can have as a warlock. And, uh... I just decided to, to just be like, yeah, okay, the features of this are good enough, but let's just assume that its actual, like, personality type is different from the description, the flavor description that it gives on D&D Beyond. Whatever. Because, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Samantha says, to be honest, at this point, I'm just F wizards in general. Oh, you mean wizards of the coast. I thought you meant wizards as in, like, the class of character type. To which I'm like, no, I'm sure wizards are fun. I've never played one, but I've always kind of wanted to. Um, I don't know. I've played I've played multiple other magic user types, but never a wizard. Um, I feel like if I like if I was going to play a wizard, I would need a pointed hat, and that's a whole other kettle of fish. Anyways, um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, Alba says uh, that's exactly what I do too. Sort of building off of an idea. I have an idea for the next character. I've taken entirely from just seeing an Instagram video of someone dancing with a rope. Amazing. Amazing start. I love that. Um. <laughs> uh, Kobe says, my character, my first character was an artificer. And who oh boy, that was a mistake. They're so complicated. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, I think sometimes it is, it is better to start out with slightly simpler types. I think Druid was all right as a first, as a first go for me, I think. Though I did, on multiple occasions, forget that actually I can just wait a second. I'm trying not to be seen, and I'm hiding in the forest. Why? Why wouldn't I just, you know, disguise myself as a as a deer or a bunny rabbit or something? Because technically, as a druid, I can do that. But I forgot to, and I'm eight foot tall, so I didn't pass the stealth check. <laughs> Oh dear, hood greater than pointy hat, says Athos. I mean, I do like a pointy hat aesthetic as well, but uh, there's room for both of them in the in the world of magic and stuff. Um, I mean, maybe like a snuffkin aesthetic wizard, I think would be fun. <coughs> Though I don't know what type of creature a snuffkin is. Oh, imagine, imagine like a, a an an RPG set, situation set in like. A Moomin Valley type world. I want this to exist. <laughs> Who do I need to bake muffins for? For there to be an RPG that is Moomin esque. Because that would be so lovely. Wouldn't that be lovely? I think that would be lovely. Hey, Sen, welcome in. And Blanca Maka, welcome in, and thank you very much for the follow. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're having a lovely Monday as well. Anywho, oh, now I re now I really want to see a Moomin esque um, RPG situation. I would play the absolute heck out of that. I mean, there are certain there are certainly games out there that have a similar kind of aesthetic to that. I just think that I don't know the kind the kinds of the kinds of like stories and campaigns and shenanigans you could get up to in that kind of world I think could be really really nice but not like not like so cozy that they're boring because you know I love the cozy content but also but also sometimes I love the less cozy content not like not like dark stuff but you know just stuff where eh, your character accidentally does a murder you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Anyways. Um, Samantha says, the biggest problem we've had with Pathfinder 2 is it still uses the terrible magic system of preparing specific slots. Ugh. Ugh. I mean, if you're sitting down at a table with your mates, can you just not, can you just choose to not do that, I guess is the question. 
Because if you can just choose to not do that, you could just, you could just not. <laughs> there, there is a lot in, in the Dungeon Dragon that I'm just like, uh, eh, you know what? I just, I don't think, I don't think this suits my character or I don't find that fun. That seems faffy and makes the game tedious, so I'm going to ignore it, you know? Um, and as long as everyone's on the same page and isn't a rules lawyer about it, then why not, you know? Anyways, um, <laughs> ooh, oh, there is apparently a spontaneous caster archetype. There you go, problem solved. Um, I'm gonna take a sip of my beverage. Of which I still have one remaining. Hooray. Ooh. Uh, Kobe says, I'm probably going to stick to non-magic characters in the future. I hate pissing about with slots and preparing. I get the flavor, but it's even more prep to forget to do. <laughs> I will say, I will say, um, anytime I've had a spell casting character where you have spells and it's like the spell components are like a single sparrow's feather and a dried piece of worm feces. I'm like, you know what? Let's just either take it as read that this is not important and or just presuppose that I've got all that stuff in my pockets, okay? And then just cast the spell because I've got a spell slot. I like I just I'm sorry to anyone for whom, like, spell ingredients is really important, but I just ignore that and consider it flavor, because I don't care. Um, for, for, like, my current, like, mainline character anyways, I don't think it's in, it's not in character for them to be, like, preparing spells and stuff just because of the way that their magic works, so... Uh, I've always just ignored that and forget that it's a thing whenever I hear people talking about it. I'm like, what do you mean I needed Eye of Newt for that? Go away. How about I do it anyways? Pew pew. I'm a bad person. Anyways. Um, so after this, in my mind, everyone should use the free archetype variant rule, because it basically means every second level you can pick a free additional archetype feat, which allows for a lot more customization without getting significantly more power. Balance stays the same, but you can customize a lot. That sounds nice. Warlock is actually the best for being a caster without playing like a caster, says Samantha. You're basically the fighter of spell casters. Mm. Warlock is fun. Warlock is a fun is a fun character type to play as well. You get to you get to give yourself a patron, which can be fun. Um you get to, depending on the type of warlock you are, you get to have a magic book, which can be fun. And everyone thinks you're cool. <laughs> Alpha says, I'm a, fe a fiend warlock in Lino's game. And there was a point in the game where they were very gearing up to being like, I'm not sure I want to do this anymore. And start looking into learning from druids and becoming a druid and beyond said no. Beyond, not cool. Not cool at all. It really is, it, re it really is a super useful resource if you're doing very specific character types and a very annoying resource otherwise. Um, because, for instance, uh, so I tried creating one of my characters on D&D &D Beyond, but they are a, um... They are a goblin sorcerer. Goblin you have to pay extra for. And then it turns out that because they're a wild magic sorcerer, you also have to pay extra for wild magic sorcerer. And it doesn't really work otherwise. Does Beyond not let you multi-class with a free account? I, I don't know. But also, uh... I just, I found a lot of things that I considered to be sort of like basic D&D &D stuff when I was looking at trying to use D&D &D Beyond for things um, were just consistently paywalled. And like, there is a lot you can do. I do have characters that are stored on my D&D &D Beyond that I use it for. Like, uh, like my gnome warlock, for instance. But... 
then it it doesn't let you get sorry to use the word granular again but it doesn't let you get granular in the way of like um for instance i would like to be a character who's a halfling water genasi that's i mentioned that character earlier my bard character i can't do that on D beyond so yeah it kind of it does kind of it imposes a lot of restrictions I guess just based on the nature of how it works, but also just the amount of stuff that's paywalled. It's like, come on, guys. Come on. Come on. <laughs> um, or a magic pet. Oh, magic pets are the best. Magic pets are the best. Um, I did actually... Oh, uh, I think at one point my warlock character did... Um, did uh have to do a a find familiar spell and because of because of their whole deal their familiar was a frog and the the party elected to name it Terry <laughs> Terry was a very good little frog <laughs> tee hee anyways i wonder where th- i wonder where they got that idea mm anywho Right. I think that's all of the blue ones. A frog, says Zathras. Yep. A froggo. And little froggo friend. Um, I was really hoping to finish all of this today, but I think I might need to finish some of it off stream, unfortunately, because it's getting it's getting towards the dinner time. But um, I, I think we can we can do a little more. We can do a little more. Uh, cause I'm doing a fairly, fairly quick dinner tonight, which shouldn't take too long. Just a little, a little pasta situation. Yum, yum. So I'm going to pull up some of this reddish black and just water it down a bit. There we go. Hopefully that is still visible enough. I think I maybe watered it down a little too much. So let me put a little paint back in it. There we go. I think, I think that'll do. Maybe just touch my paintbrush to the to the paint pan again. Okay, that should do. Anyways, so the guy says, heard Frogo, hi. Heard Frogo, yes. I uh, was just talking about how one of my Dungeon Dragon characters had a familiar who was a frog named Terry. Um, who was a very helpful little Frogo, it has to be said. We, uh, we sent little Terry on, on a mission to basically do some intel gathering at a location that we we weren't sure was like safe to sneak into it was uh and he did a great job so thank you terry anyways you know terry the uh terry the forg mage there he is yay <laughs> well done terry says up it's hell yeah terry is a good little guy Actually, there's. I did a little portrait of Terry not long ago, and I still haven't posted it anywhere, but it looks like this. There's my portrait of Terry. Anyways. Um. <laughs> uh. Ugh. Uh, Samantha says, that's the base rules for multiclassing. Makes sense uh, for newbies to stop them accidentally multiclassing into something that they cannot really make use of. That is a good point. Oh! Uh, Alva says, our group has a frog go too. Sky has a frog called Cog. That's adorable. Absolutely adorable. My, my, like, main character person, um, at the moment has a, they have, a an Archaeopteryx. So basically like a dinosaur bird who's very, very cute. Um, and his name is Rangi after their dad. So was Terry cruising around? Yes. Well, probably hippity hopping, but you know what? For for the sake of the pun, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Anywho. Okay. Alrighty. Oh no. Trying to make these lines be not too thick is challenging even with this teeny tiny brush 
the lines still want to be kind of thick. <sighs> it's hard work. It's hard work, I tell you. Being a painter of the things. Of the teeny tinies. The absurdly tittle details. Is, is difficult work. It's not 100% thankless, at least. But it is difficult. Or at least I find it difficult. But, like, in a fun way. So it's okay. Mm. At least this one tea is quite good cold. Actually, I would say the ginger in the... So that's the winter is coming tea. And the ginger, when it's cold, kind of comes to the fore. Which gives it a bit of, like, a ginger ale vibe. And I love ginger ale. I find ginger ale to be a very comforting taste. Um, I think largely because ginger ale was a real part of, like, the grandma's house experience for me when I was growing up. I would go to, on the Hungarian side of my family, we would go to grandparents' house. And the soft drink of choice would be Canada Dry Ginger Ale, which was never in the fridge, always in the basement because the basement was colder. So it was cold, but it wasn't, like, fridge cold. Cold-ish cans of Canada Dry Ginger Ale. And I find it really sad that it's kind of... It's hard to get good ginger ale here. They do have ginger ale, but because of the whole, like, soft drink rules, um, you can't really find ginger ale that hasn't had artificial sweetener added to it easily. Um... So I've taken to buying, like, a, a, the occasional bottle of ginger cordial and then buying, like, a case of bottles of sparkling water and just combining the two myself to make my own, like, ginger, ginger ale-esque cordial beverage. And, uh, it's, it's really nice. So there you go. Anyways. Okay. Oh man, the the more I line weight these things, the more I notice how how wonky some of these books on some of these shelves are, but you know, oh well, tis what tis. Tis what tis, and these books are trying their best and I'm trying my best too. And it's all good. Actually, I think for the most part the red ones don't look too horrific. Which is nice. Got some nice weighty tomes here. I have no idea what any of these books are about. Maybe some of them are books about magic. Who knows? How to get the best out of your spell components. What do you mean you're not using your spell components? <laughs> then how are you doing magic? This book is magic. It makes no sense. Don't look too hard at it. Uh, ah, the sugar tax, because scapegoating obesity is easier than, easier than funding the NHS. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I realize that I realize that I may have a particular sensitivity to sweeteners and how they taste. But also, man, I really hate the way they taste. And... I've, I've ranted about this before, so I won't belabor the point too much, but man, I really hate the way they taste. It's just a law passed and suddenly, like, a whole range of beverages was closed off to me. <sighs> I want black currant cordial. And you know what that means? Waiting for this one black currant cordial that's imported from Sweden to come back in stock at the Scandinavian grocery store in London. That's what it means. Which is uh, a little frustrating. But again, this may be my particular sensitivities talking here as well. Because I, I honestly feel like a lot of people don't notice as much and it doesn't bother them as much. Um, like the, the, the taste and experience of things that have artificial sweeteners. But I also just don't think they're very healthy. Unless you have, like, specific... Unless you have specific health issues that say you cannot have sugar. Um, I think in general... I don't know. 
maybe maybe also try beverages that just aren't sweetened then you know like just just a regular just a plain filter coffee is very nice if it's a good coffee you know just like a cup of green tea with peppermint delightful why not anyways it's all Jamie Oliver's fault um i don't i don't like him <laughs> Anyways, enough about that. What am I having for dinner? I'm having pasta. That's what I'm having for dinner. With some peas as well. It's going to be hopefully very fast and very nice. I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely getting a little bit hungry here. What's for dinner, chat? What are y'all having for your evening meal? I hope it's something delicious. I hope it is nice. I feel like the line weight on these books is making them look just slightly less jank, but uh, yeah, I think sweeteners are different different in America consider compared to here's a silly little guy. How much sweetener are we talking? Um, it it varies, but um, also the the type varies. Sometimes sometimes you'll see like some kind of steviol type thing. Sometimes it's it's um, aspartame and ACE K. Um, regardless. It doesn't work for me. <laughs> and I don't think I'm alone, but also... Huh, it's one of the government weird health initiatives. I did see an article in... Oh, I don't remember... I don't remember which... What publication it was, but I saw an article that was just a whole bunch of different writers sort of grieving the loss of beloved beverages that aren't good anymore. <laughs> because they've got sweeteners in them. <laughs> Jamie Oliver is a classist shithead, says Samantha. He is! He really is! He's just, honestly, like, very, very not, you know, even his sort of like, you know, I'm trying to do something really good for the country, and it's just, you know, it's just really... Like, he is a TV chef. That doesn't necessarily mean that he has the expertise to guide on anything to do with like public health policy. It truly does not. But he's the kind of person who has a lot of ambition and a lot of large ideas and is very loud about them. And that's, that's the difference. And people who have a lot of big ideas and ambition and are very loud about them are often the people who get to get things done. <laughs> so yeah. Um, Stevie, t Stevie tastes like dog ass. It is a, uh, Mr. Hangman, it is a sweetener. It is a, it is an artificial sweetener in as much as it is like a no calorie sweetener, but it is natural in as much as it comes from a plant as opposed to being like synthesized as it were. Um, man, I could be a TV chef. It looks so easy, says Mr. Hangman. <laughs> Just got to make up recipes the night before and then say, we're going to do something crazy while cooking. Hey, why not? <laughs> People love chaos. Um, great, Yuki. Hello. How can I be not nice to an artist who is so... Oh, sorry to... Thank you, Great Yuki. That's very sweet Attention. of you. I Twitch hope you user Hello? Choppers. Scissor hands. Hello. Welcome in. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for the raid. How is it going, my friend? Lovely to see you. Hello, raiders. Welcome in. Hello. Hello. Oh, great, Yuki. Thank you very much for the follow as well. Let me get a shout out for you, my friend. Hold up. Shout out. What were you up to today? How was your stream? What, do you, what did you do on this very day? And uh, K Benny P, hello. Welcome in as well. Lovely to see you. Welcome, welcome. How are you doing? How was your stream? Lovely to see y'all. For anyone who's new here, hello. My name is Twitch user Sammy Kelsch. I'm a variety streamer. I do... Okay, Benny P. Thank you very much for the follow. Welcome on in. Uh, my name is Twitch user Sammy Kelsch. I'm a variety streamer. I do art streams on Mondays and Thursdays. I do game streams on Fridays and sometimes on Sundays as well. We are finishing this bookshop, damn it. <laughs> uh, I might not get it done today because we're, we're going to be wrapping up fairly soon. But... Um, I will be finishing it before the next stream because we've been at this for a month, y'all. Can you believe to learn? 
Um, but, uh, but yeah, that, that's me. I'm a traditional artist working mostly in watercolors and other similar sort of wet media, uh, and the occasional other thing as well. And, um, yeah, I'm making my way through another playthrough of Hollow Knight on Fridays as well, if that's what you're into. Um, Zizzer says we're doing well, just streaming some Baldur's Gate. Ooh, very nice. I hope you're having a lovely time. I hope you're having a fun time doing the fights and making the, making friends with the NPCs and... I don't know, may maybe some romance if that's what you're into, but if that's what you're not, you can also not do that. I haven't played any Baldur's Gate, but I kind of really want to because it looks really fun. Though I may just character creation screen. <laughs> and then start a new save and then do another character creation screen. Because that's one of my favorite parts of games, is getting to character creation screen. Uh, cool new characters. And Baldur's Gate has a fantastic character creation screen. But anywho. It is lovely to see you. It is lovely to see your wonderful people. And thank you again so much for the raid. Let me get another shout out for you in the chat. Zizzer. There we go. And if you are not following Zizzer, go do it. Go do that. Do it now. Anyway. Um, but thank you so much for the raid. I really appreciate it. Thank you for trusting me with your people. And I hope that you, um, that you're having a good time. Um, it's amazing. I spent several hours on character creator. It's fantastic for that. Um, oh, Sen says the character creator is not that great for faces. You only get base models and no refining them, which is like the essential thing I want from a character creator. Well, yeah, I guess it, I guess it depends on what your, what your aims are with it. Um, <laughs> Samantha says Baldur's Gate 3 gives you so many good romance options to choose from. And also Gail. Aw, poor Gail. I'm sure he's trying his best. I don't actually know if he's trying his best. I don't know him. Um, but, uh, I did, I did see a bit of, a bit of romance that my partner experienced on their, one of their playthroughs of, of BG3. Um, and I did think it was very entertaining because the, the character that they romanced after having a, an encounter was like, all right, back to work. Let's go. We've got things to do. And there, and, and the, the the player character was like, was like that was amazing. And they were like, yeah, I know. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, of course I am. Let's go. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> it does let you choose your genitals se separate from your pronouns and body type, but that's important too. <laughs> uh, Kate Benny pieces. I romanced Gail, not exactly willingly, but I did romance him. Oh goodness gracious! You know who I'm romancing right now. Harvey in Stardew Valley because it's just I just installed the update and I played like a week's worth of days on the farm last night and I was like you know this time I've never romanced Harvey before so I started a Harvey romance my farmer's name is Jeff and I named the farm creatively Jeff's farm <laughs> having a great time so far I forgot how much I absolutely adore that game anyways have I painted, have I done all of the red book things? I think I have. Okay, good. Um, I'm playing Stardew as well. It's fab. It's so good, isn't it? I used to, I played it for like continuously years ago and, and then I kind of fell off of it and now I'm back into it again with the new update. I'm like, I want to explore all the new stuff. I'm so excited. Anyways, I got romanced by Asterian scissors. They're also not voluntarily. Hey, you know what? Maybe you are just, you're just, your, your characters are just radiating so much like charisma and, and loveliness that NPCs are just drawn to you, even if you're not into them. <laughs> uh, I romance Sam Co voluntarily. Yes, different game. There's a Sam in Stardew Valley. His hair looks like Goku's. So I always call him Goku. I think... I think Sam is the one that I that I romanced or started romancing on the the farm that I had with my moderator slash spouse. <laughs> That's right there. Oh, sweetheart. There's no, it wasn't because there is a no. That was on my stream farm, so that was like a not me character. Because on our farm that we have together, I was really hopeful that at some point we could get the materials together so that we could have a Stardew Valley wedding. Yeah. Because you can do that. I want to have a Stardew Valley wedding. We're already married, yes, but I want to have another one. Anyways, um, it is past time to make dinner. So I think I'm going to call it there for today. Let me just do one, one last catch up with chat. Um, 
Stardew Valley has Abigail as the one two choi- true choices, Samantha. I will also accept Penny or Leah. I like I I I think the first character I romanced was either was Leah. I think, I think she was the first one that I romanced because I mean she's an artiste, but she also drinks way too much wine. <laughs> um, Abigail is very fun though. I think that's who I think that's who uh, Sledge is going to romance in his in his new farm if he sticks with it. Uh, but yeah, I want a Final Fantasy... Oh, God, Roman numerals. Final Fantasy 14 wedding, I think. Uh, Sister says, I'm thinking of romancing Sam and starting mainly because I like me a video game fan. He's a sweet guy. He's very fun. Um, what's the guy's name that comes up to you on the beach, right? <laughs> romance them. Is that is that Willie? I like... I wish Willie was a romanceable option. Oh, there is also Elliot. Maybe you mean Elliot. Elliot's like the poetic guy. Willie is not a romanceable NPC, and I resent that because I would totally romance Willie. First Immortal King said, did you say Hollow Knight earlier? Yeah, I stream Hollow Knight on Friday mornings. Um, and I've actually done some Hollow Knight art as well. Um, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna shamelessly plug, but like no pressure, obviously. <laughs> But you can see some of my Hollow Knight art there as well. Uh, but I do play Hollow Knight every Friday morning. We're uh, doing a playthrough right now where it is the Rescue Cloth playthrough. So I'm currently trying to get real strong to try and fight the Traitor Lord all by myself. Wish me luck. I'm scared. But anyways, um, just not that. Oh, yes. That being said, I am not streaming this Friday. Uh, the schedule is in the Discord. I'll pop a link to the Discord as well. Uh, I won't be streaming this Friday because it is a holiday weekend and I will be busy doing holiday stuff, unfortunately. But I'll be back the following Friday as usual to do all the usual gubbins in the Hollow Knight. But yes. Uh, and thank you very much for the follow, First of Mortal King. I much appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Welcome on in. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Sammy even cu- killed our lovely Zote in cold blood. Listen. A, it's what he wanted. And B, it was for an achievement. Therefore... Holiday stuff equals sleeping, hopefully. I'm gonna be busy. I'm gonna be a busy bumblebee on Friday, Sludge Darling. <laughs> um, but uh, I'll sleep then. You can sleep. I will be baking Easter bread and making, like, little Easter egg nests out of Rice Krispie. So, there. Anyways. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to wrap up. So, I'm gonna see who abouts is online abouts that I can do a little raid abouts on. Um... Uh, this has got to go have a lovely evening. Thank you so much again for the raid. I really appreciate it. Lovely to see you. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. I am going to send us in the direction of a raid. Beth is online. Let's go raid Beth then. Thank you for the, thank you for the shout, sweetheart. Why not? We love Beth. Beth is cool. Beth is fun. Love me some Beth. Let's type in her username and remember that her username is not just Beth. I almost just typed in Beth, which would not have taken us <laughs> to raid Beth. Anyways, uh, Beth was in the chat earlier, so you may remember Beth. Um, <laughs> I'm going to pop a generic raid message in the chat. If you would like to grab a generic raid message, you can. Um, what will the raid message be? Let's pop some ananas in there. Just popping in to say hi. If you don't have the emotes, uh, feel free to just say generic raid message. If you do have the emotes, feel free to grab it with the emotes. And if you don't have the emotes, you can just grab whatever emotes you want that you think are cool. It's all good. Um, I hope that uh, I hope that y'all have a wonderful rest of your Monday. I will be back on Thursday doing I don't know what. You'll see this painting be done. Don't you worry. Um... It's been really fun hanging out with y'all today. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you for the the raids and the follows and all the lovely stuff and just for just for being y'all. You're all breathtaking. And uh yeah, hope to see you again soon. Have a good rest of your evening and all that jazz and uh thanks for watching. And uh goodbye and good night.